Starting off this countdown, we have Costa Concordia. On January 13th of 2012, the Italian cruise ship Costa Concordia sadly crashed into underwater rocks. This resulted in the ship capsizing and sinking. Sadly, 32 passengers lost their lives in this tragedy. And Google Earth caught it on camera. It has photos of the ship laying on its side, which is a dark reminder of this tragedy. The captain of the ship ended up being charged with multiple counts of manslaughter. He was sent to 16 years in prison as people argued that he delayed the evacuation of the ship and then he fled the ship and left the crew and passengers to fend for themselves. In our number 9 spot today we have the bunker. If you were to take a nice little scroll through the deserts of New Mexico, at some point you'd see something etched into the ground. They appear to be two large diamonds that are surrounded by a pair of overlapping circles. Okay. Likely not a naturally occurring situation, so what could it be? Maybe an ancient geoglyph? Maybe some sort of cool secret Area 51 style place? No, of course it's just allegedly the site of some hidden bunker that belongs to the Church of Scientology. Apparently this cult uses these symbols to guide Scientologists who are returning to Earth after fleeing a planet's Armageddon. Okay. Sure. There are other examples of strange and hidden places that somehow link back to this cult, so it really has me wondering just how many properties and areas that they have and what they're up to. Maybe that explanation really is the truth behind these symbols, but what if it's not? Despite how controversial this cult is, they've managed to grow quite widespread and they've gained some quite well-known people over the years, like Tom Cruise and John Travolta. <laughs> So random. In our number 8 spot today we have the cauldron. Google Earth can basically take you anywhere except for the areas they of course have blocked off for a variety of reasons. And when I say basically anywhere, sometimes I mean even the most absurd places, including right to the edge of a boiling cauldron of lava. That's right, you can head right to the edge of the volcano that is located on an island in the Vanuatu chain in the South Pacific. It is cool because it's likely the closest I'll ever get to seeing this kind of view in real life. But it's also terrifying to look into that cavern that's filled with bright, hot magma. Like, even just looking at this photo, you can almost feel the heat and the panic of being at the mouth of a volcano. Very cool, but also very scary. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Nevada Triangle. This image from Google Maps captures a spooky symbol that is lurking in the deserts of Nevada. I think conspiracy theorists have forever ruined triangles just in general, but this large one with all the circles inside, coupled with the minimal answers on on what it is definitely makes for a bit of an eerie sight. Right now, the most popular theory as to what this could be is a bombing target. Apparently, close by is an Air Force base, so that theory truly would make quite a bit of sense. It could also be some sort of abandoned airstrip, perhaps, but of course, with any mystery on the internet, there are more very wild theories out there. Of course, there's the obligatory it's aliens theory, along with some sort of Illuminati idea, but it wouldn't be the internet without it. In our number 6 spot today we have the fire. As the satellites and little cars go by that document the imagery used on Google Maps, they can't exactly predict or control who or what is going to be happening in the area captured. Sometimes it might capture someone who will eventually be blurred out on their front lawn. Sometimes it captures accidents, and in this case it captured an absolutely raging field fire in Arkansas. It would already be terrifying from the ground, but seeing it from this vantage point really shows how large and powerful it is. Someone on Reddit made a good point saying that it appears as though there are people on the south side, which likely means that the fire is contained and controlled thankfully, but that doesn't really make it any less cool or interesting to see. In our number 5 spot today we have the Valley of Dolls. Google Maps, especially the street view, is such a great way to look around a place and kind of get your bearings before you even get there. I mean, I remember almost 8 years ago now, before I moved to Toronto, I spent hours digitally walking around the streets seeing my home, where I was going to go to school, all that jazz. It was super exciting. But sometimes you walk around a city so unlike your own that it absolutely shocks you, and that is likely what would happen if you were to just stumble upon the town or village of Nagoro in Japan, which is known as the Valley of Dolls. A woman named Ayano Tsukimi grew up in the village and remembers a time when it was full of families and other children just like her, but during her years in secondary school, she and her family moved to Osaka. Ayano continued to 
grow up, she married and had her own kids, all the while her parents ended up moving back to the town. After her mother passed away, she also moved back to the village in order to help care for her father, and this is when she realized that the population of the town had dropped drastically since her time here as a child. While living here and trying to keep her garden free of crows, she made a scarecrow that resembled her father, and she placed it outside. When she realized that those living in the village began to mistake the scarecrow for her father, she had an idea to commemorate those in the village who had passed away with a scarecrow and Boom! 350 dolls later, the town became an attraction for travelers and journalists. It's a bit eerie to peer through on Google Maps, but when the full story is revealed, it gets way less sinister and actually kind of sweet. In our number four spot today, we have the Costa Concordia. The Costa Concordia was a huge ship with 17 decks, six restaurants, and a three story theater. The ship was big enough to hold a whopping 4,200 passengers, so there were a lot of people on this boat on January 13th. 2012. On that day, the boat's captain wanted to sail a little closer to the island of Isla del Giglio than he normally would so that he could impress and salute the residents. He turned off the ship's alarm for the computer navigation system, which turned out to be just as terrible of an idea as you would think it is. He thought he knew the waters well enough to navigate by sight, but when the ship struck an underwater rock, things took a deadly turn. The ship capsized and sank, which unfortunately ended up taking the lives of some of the passengers on board. The captain, who was responsible for the accident in the first place, made one more awful mistake when he abandoned ship while passengers were still stuck on board. The recovery for the ship was the largest of its kind as the huge ship had been entirely dismantled. You might be wondering why on earth I just told you an entire shipwreck story, and that is because both the wreck as well as the subsequent rescue efforts were visible on Google Earth for quite some time. The satellite imagery probably isn't even as near as terrifying as it must have been to be close during those terrifying days, but it does give us an idea of the size of this disaster. In our number three spot today, we have the crater. Space is very cool, but for every cool and interesting thing I learn about it, I also learn one equally or even more terrifying thing about it as well. It's a very scary place and we truly have no control over the powers of it, which is exactly why this startling image found on Google Earth is an unsettling one. Somewhere in northern Arizona, there is a mark that is like an Earth scar and it serves as a reminder of a 50,000 year old meteor strike. When I call it a mark or a scar, I am greatly understating it as this thing is a huge huge crater known as the Behringer Crater. It's the result of a 150 foot slab of nickel iron that smashed into the earth with the exploding force of two and a half million tons of TNT. Yeah, this sure makes me glad I wasn't around 50,000 years ago. This natural disaster caused this natural landmark that serves as our reminder of just how small we really are. In our number two spot today, we have the scene. This is an image that went viral with people saying that if you typed in these certain coordinates that you will see what people think is a man and dragging a body down a dock and leaving a bloody trail behind. That would be gruesome, wouldn't it? When looking at the image, it does seem compelling and that is pretty much what it looks like, although it's definitely still a little unclear. In fact, it was so compelling that Snopes actually did an article on it. The dock is located in the Netherlands, and according to their research into it, Snopes claims that the photo is just a few people walking, and they are likely accompanied by a sort of brown dog, who may have just jumped into the water and then left some watermarks, thus the reasoning for the red stained wood. That is definitely a less sinister explanation, and it's the one I'm hoping is true. In our number one spot today, we have the pond. Davy Lee Niles was 72 years old in 2006 when he disappeared. Sadly, for almost a decade, the case went cold as no one could find him or his car or even figure out what might have happened to him. That was until someone was decorating a Christmas tree in 2015 and was high up on a lift and they spotted something deep within a pond nearby. That something they spotted turned out to be something that had also been visible on Google Maps for years and in the end, it was the car that belonged to Davy. And when the authorities went to recover it, they were able to find his body inside. The car wasn't visible before because at ground level it's just too mercury. While the satellite image taken from Google Maps makes it quite clear that there is something there, not too many people are taking a virtual tour around this body of water. Thankfully that person in 2015 wasn't only aware of their surroundings, but they said something when they saw something, and it was able to lead to closure for the family of Davy. At number 10 we have 36 degrees north, 117 degrees west, Death Valley, USA. One of the worst spots in America 
America to get lost on a hiking trip. Now thanks to air conditioned cars and cell phones most people won't meet their end in this wasteland. But back when pioneers had to cross this desert it was one of the most challenging tasks imaginable. If you were caught out there without supplies you would last less than a day. Either dehydration, sunstroke or one of the many predators living out there would make you meet your end faster than a pizza pocket when I'm drunk. Death Valley has the highest recorded temperature on the planet clocking in at 57 degrees Celsius. The whole joke about being hot enough to fry an egg on the sidewalk is real there. Except it won't be an egg, it will be your intestines as a vulture rips them out of your stomach. And if you manage to make it through the day into the night the temperature will plummet. In the winter it can get as cold as minus 10 Celsius. As beautiful as the desert can be I don't think I would want this to be my next vacation spot. If you're ever traveling through there make sure you bring a ton of water and some blankets just in case your car breaks down. Oh, that would suck. In our number 9 spot today we have The Invitation. This weird Google Maps image comes to us from Memphis, Tennessee. And while I've never been, I've heard wonderful, wonderful things. That is all except for this weird message that was found as someone was searching through Google Maps and it's located on the top of the building. Someone wrote this message and it's gotta be pretty large considering it was so easy to read even from this distance, but the message says, come downtown and play. I don't know what kind of Pennywise is out there writing these kinds of messages, but I know I'm not crazy and there's something almost sinister feeling about it. It is likely some sort of marketing tactic or something of that nature. I mean, at least I hope it is, but from a distance when it looks like it could be something that was spray painted by a random person, it just seems weird, you know? I just know I probably won't be RSVPing to this invite anytime soon. Thanks, but no thanks. In our number 8 spot today we have The Disposal. Mannequins are always creepy. I don't care. They just are. My old roommate was a hairdresser and when she was in school sometimes I'd go to get a glass of water in the middle of the night and be absolutely startled by the disembodied head I saw and only after the near heart attack realize in my sleepy state that it in fact was just a mannequin head. Well you can imagine people got a lot of the same sort of feeling when they were on Google Maps and saw this sight of all of these discarded mannequins that truly for a second looks like it's a pile of bodies sitting in the trash. How horrifying. This sight was seen on Google Maps in Chile and it definitely was free people out. I wonder what these mannequins were used for. I mean, there's a ton of them so it must have been used for some sort of clothing shop or like a seamstress or something, right? Maybe it's just wishful thinking but that's what I'm choosing to believe. In our number 7 spot today we have friendship. This is one google map sighting that doesn't have a lot of information behind it which definitely makes it all the more eerie. Basically this is just an image of a group of friends standing together in the desert. Maybe a little strange but not so weird. Right? Well, yeah, except for the weird masks they're wearing and the fact that they're all staring directly at the camera. I'm sure the story behind this one is that these friends saw the Google Maps car coming and decided to play a little prank, probably similar to the pigeon people, but I mean, no one has been able to confirm this and who keeps a bunch of scary masks on them? I mean, I guess the mission these people set out on was likely accomplished because here we are talking about this creepy prank. In our number 6 spot today we have the SS Yasim wreck. The SS Yasim was a Bolivian cargo ship that sank on the evening of December 1st, 2003. For a while, no one was quite sure as to why it sank, as well as the fact that no one could find the wreck. This was honestly very strange just in general, but also especially because of the fact that the ship was quite large at 265 feet. This is exactly why it was so surprising when, a few years ago, the Google Maps team located the sunken vessel based on their satellite imaging. The ship was found on its side, perhaps in the same location it initially sank, in Wingate Reef, just off of the coast of Sudan. The mystery as to why the wreck was never found was realized because of the location of it. The wreck is close to an island where an uncontacted tribe lives. Of course, for the safety of both the tribe as well as outsiders who might not be welcomed, people thankfully tend to leave the island alone, but this is exactly why the wreck wasn't found for so long. This wreck then became one of the largest visible on Google Earth until quite recently. In our number 5 spot today we have the Gobi Desert Structure. This is one discovery that I talked about recently and it's one that had considerable conspiracy theorists minds absolutely swirling. About a decade ago someone was searching through some google maps images when they found a mysterious array of structures and patterns that appeared to be etched into the surface of the Gobi Desert which is located in China. The structures as they are referred to are kind of similar to geoglyphs but these ones look modern and newly created and rather than actually being carved into the ground they're made of something. The internet of course came up with some pretty insane speculations of what these structures could be 
be or what they might be used for, and the ideas stretched from spy satellite calibration to some sort of Illuminati affiliated product. So who really knows at this point? In our number four spot today, we have the perpetrators. Okay, so this picture is definitely not really terrifying itself, but the story behind it certainly is. So basically in 2011, a woman who lives in Oklahoma City was unfortunately the victim of a terrible crime. She was held at gunpoint by one man while another raided her home. I can't even imagine. That must have been so terrible and terrifying. So imagine her surprise one day when a friend of hers was on Google Maps in her neighborhood and who does she see other than the two people who committed this crime against her? They were seen on the street camera hanging out apparently near her home. She of course called the police and turned the images over to them and it is said that they are using them in the investigation. It is unclear if they were ever able to catch the perpetrators or not, but hopefully this image proved to be useful. In our number three spot today, we have the escape artist. Listen, not everything appears as it is on the surface, but this one at best is definitely fishy. Basically, it appears as if the Google Maps camera may have caught someone as they escape prison. This photo comes from Michigan and it was taken by Google in front of the Lenawee County Jail. Basically, in the image, you see a guy walking in a white jumpsuit with black stripes, carrying a bag on his shoulder, with the jail visible in the background. When someone initially saw this on Google Maps, they of course screenshotted it and posted it to Reddit asking people if Google caught someone as they were escaping. Honestly, we aren't exactly sure, but it is entirely possible that this inmate was just a trusted one who was on some kind of work duty where they were doing some work outside of the fence. Perhaps whoever was supervising just wasn't in the view of the Google car. Either that or this guy's the most calm escapee I've ever seen. In our number two spot today, we have Caught Red Handed. In 2008, a young man in Holland was biking home when two men ended up ambushing him and they stole his bike, phone, and the cash he had on him. First, authorities were having trouble finding who the two men were that did this to him because of a lack of evidence, but just six months later, there was a break in the case. The boy was looking at the street view of where the incident happened, and as he explored just a little bit, he found that the Google Maps car camera had captured the moments just prior to this terrible incident. That means that the camera captured the faces of those who had stolen his belongings. He ended up calling the police, who then called Google and asked for the unblurred versions of the photos. When Google delivered them, the police realized that they were able to directly identify the pair in the photo who were a pair of 24 year old brothers. Who knew that Google Maps could help bring people to justice? In our number one spot today, we have the cold case. This is one thing that was discovered on Google Map that is really similar to a story that I covered in part one of this series. Basically in 2007, someone was on Google Maps when they spotted something in a body of water that appeared to them to be a car. It turns out that they were right and they helped the authorities solve an over 20 year old cold case. Apparently a man named William Molt was reported missing from Florida on November 7th, 1997. He never returned home after a night out and police had been searching for him ever since. Once that person in 2007 brought what they found to the police, they were able to investigate and they found the missing vehicle. Inside was a body that they were finally able to identify as the missing William. It truly is a very tragic story, but at least he was finally found so that he can be returned to his loved ones and they can have some closure to the story. Starting us off, in a number 10 on this list, we have this. All right, I'm not sure what I'm looking at, but I think these are the real life pigeon men. If I saw this, if I was driving around at nighttime and I saw this, I'd be freaking out. I don't know if a robbery is about to go down. I don't know what's going on. Is this a, is this a bird protest? Are you protesting for pigeons? Okay, well, apparently this photo was actually found by a Reddit user and it's from Japan. It's a pretty famous random Google map image and kind of hilarious. I just have way too many questions on that one. I don't know why that became famous. What is the backstory? In our ninth spot, we have 2207 Seymour Avenue. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up. 2207 Seymour Avenue, located in Cleveland, Ohio, is a home where a horrific crime took place. From 2002 to 2004, Ariel Castro kidnapped three young women. Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Georgina De Jesus. He kept them captive in his home until 2013 when Amanda Berry escaped with her daughter and contacted the police. The police came to his house and rescued the other women. Castro was arrested within hours. He was sentenced to life plus 1,000 years in prison without parole. Due to the disturbing crimes that took place at his home, Google Maps decided to blur his house. In fact, the house has been named the House of Horrors. But a couple years back, his house was demolished to 
help the victims move on from their traumatizing past. Coming in at number eight, we have the French nuclear facility. The Arriva La Hague nuclear fuel reprocessing facility in France is another place that is blurred out on Google Maps. This facility opened in 1976 and is responsible for treating nuclear fuel from several countries. Here's the thing though, this facility hasn't always been blurred out. By using the Google Earth history tab, you can see old Google Earth images of this facility. So now, why all of a sudden is it blurred out? What is going on there? Well, it may have something to do with the controversy it has received and the backlash it received from Greenpeace. Since 1997, Greenpeace has been trying to shut it down, saying that they dump 1 million liters of liquid radioactive waste per day in the ocean. That is severely messed up if that's true. Maybe that's why it's blurred out, so that people don't see what they're really up to with their nuclear waste. Moving on to number seven, we have the French prison. There are a number of prisons that are blurred out on Google Earth, including the Beaumet prison in Marseille. Now, why do they blur out images of prisons? Well, a couple of reasons. One, for privacy. But the main reason is so that the criminals don't know the layout of the prison. Basically, this prison wasn't always blurred. Following a successful jailbreak, France's Minister of Justice was like, why are there aerial images of this prison available online? And then that led to the prison getting blurred. But of course, you can still find older images of the prison on Google Maps that show what it looks like and its layout. In our sixth spot, we have the Antarctic Ice Shield. This is another pretty strange place to get blurred. But basically, halfway between Australia and Madagascar, there is a 22 kilometer long blur in the middle of the Antarctic ice shield. I mean, this place is one of the most isolated places on Earth. There's nothing but ice and penguins there. So why is it being blurred out? We don't know for sure, but people think that there is something hidden there that we're not allowed to see. Although it's thought to be owned by Australia, theory goes that Russia or the US have built a research facility there. The only way we'll know for sure is by visiting the place itself. So who's coming with me for this field trip? It'll be a lot of fun. Come on, just pack a snowsuit and lots of hot packs. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Moroa Island. Located in French Polynesia, this island was first used for nuclear testing in 1966 by France. These tests apparently took place until 1996. That's when the French president shut down the facility. Why? Well, Greenpeace found out that these tests were polluting the water as far as Peru and New Zealand. In fact, many locals in Tahiti have claimed they have been affected by the radiation from the tests. Nowadays, the island is off limit to visitors and is guarded by French forces, which is probably why half the island is blurred on Google Maps. Or maybe it's because they're still doing these nuclear tests. We may never know. Moving on to number four, we have Elmira Correctional Facility. Elmira Correctional Facility, also known as The Hills, is a maximum security state prison in New York. This is another facility blurred on Google Earth. Why? Well, a number of reasons. One, they have fears of an aerial attack. Number two, they have fears that someone will use this information to plan an escape. And number three, the prison is highly secure. Why would they want images of the building online for everyone to see? But it turns out that this location got blurred after a number of riots and mass escapes. Moving on to number three, we have North Korea. Okay, is it even shocking that North Korea has sections of its country blurred? I mean, they are so secretive, so this isn't a surprise at all. Now, the area that is blurred is along the country's western shore. So people have thought that they are hiding something there, maybe a secret military project. Who knows? I mean, hey, the country is hiding so many things. Like I said, this one doesn't really come as a surprise. In our second spot, we have Pateo de los Naranjos. Located in Spain, this place translates to Orange Tree Yard, and it is completely censored on Google Maps. No matter how close you try to zoom in on the map or the area close by, you won't be able to see anything. Why? Well, there's a lot of government buildings located there. So it's blurred out for security and privacy reasons, which makes sense. Many government or military buildings are blurred out on Google Maps for similar reasons. And in our number one spot today, we have Jeanette Island. Located in Russia, this island is said to contain a secret Russian military base. If you type this island into Google, you'll find a whole lot of nothing. Legit, it just looks like a bunch of water. It's not even registered on Google Maps as an island. 
When you type in its coordinates, you will see a message that says this island is unavailable. Now, before it was removed from the maps altogether, it wasn't even blurred out. It was actually blacked out. Like there was a full on black mash just covering it. But when you zoomed in, you could see this icy mass, and that's all. According to Reddit user Exoplanetary Science, he said, and I quote, Google rarely blacks out without reason. A search through Google Earth shows that this has been permanently blurred out, even in images dating back to the 1980s. I'm going to guess there's a concealed Russian military base located there, and possibly quite a substantial one. So. There you have it folks, secret Russian military base. Starting us off at number 10 is the floating shadow. Now this image was taken in 2008, so I don't think it's on Google Street View anymore because they update it every few years, but this one was taken on 29th Street in San Francisco. And it's literally just a normal street house on both sides, but in the sky, in the middle of the clouds, there's a huge black shape that looks like a floating guitar case. And I get when something gets caught on the Google camera itself and that shows up on the image, but the shape is massive, it's not a tiny blot on the camera, it's a gigantic black entity in the sky and I don't get why other people haven't drawn attention to this. Some people were saying it's some type of UFO aircraft, others are saying it's photoshop, which, which you can't even do, you can't photoshop google street view, so I genuinely don't know what it is. Some people even suggested it could be a projection, but projections in the sky rarely ever turn out as opaque as this floating thing, so I highly doubt that hypothesis either. Either way, if you guys have any ideas do let me know otherwise thank you aliens for not abducting us while you clearly had the chance. At number 9 we have 25 degrees south, 153 degrees east, Fraser's Island, Australia. Australia is a beautiful place, it's like hot Canada with more fighting and beer. Honestly I've never been there, I'm just basing it off of movies and TV, I'm really stereotyping you guys, I'm very sorry. But globally Australia is known for housing some of the most dangerous creatures on the planet and Fraser's Island is considered the most dangerous place in Australia. It's basically a funnel for several different dangerous dangerous species. To start it off, there are two types of jellyfish which are common to Fraser's Island, Urukanji and Blue Bottles. Both of those jellyfish have stings so severe that they will send you to the hospital. And if the waters weren't dangerous enough, this is also a hot spot for young great white sharks. I'm assuming they go to these beaches for biting practices. They want to get their reflexes nice and sharp before they chase down some surfers. So you might be saying to yourself, well I'll just stay out of the water and I'll go explore the island. Well there are packs of wild dingoes running around waiting to turn your tibia into a chew toy. Oh, and if you get attacked by any of these wild animals, there is zero medical services on the island. So you better hope you don't bleed out fast while the helicopter is zooming you to save your life. At number 8 we have 12 degrees north, 57 degrees east, Danakil Desert, Ethiopia. We're jumping back into the heat and with winter just around the corner, this place makes me kind of jealous. I know that temperatures in deserts are high enough to kill someone, but I think it might be nicer than having to wait for a bus in the snow. Anyways, the Danakil Desert, also known known as the Danakil Depression is one of the hottest places on the planet and because of its extreme heat it's home to natural wonders. First there is a decent amount of volcanic activity. This might be one of the only places on earth where you walk into the desert to cool off. There's also mysterious salt pools. These are one of the largest tourist attractions in the area. Salt deposits build up on the sides of these pools and the water is packed with sulfur. The salt has the aesthetic of a rimmed glass straight from nature's cocktail lounge. However don't drink from one of these pools unless you want a slow, painful death. And I think we can agree we're all looking for swift and numb when it comes to dying. The pools are extremely poisonous. Even the air just above the pools is so packed with carbon dioxide that when small animals get too close they will suffocate and die. And here's the cherry on top of the sundae, this place is nicknamed the gateway to hell. Wow. Beautiful. At number 7 we have 37 degrees north, 59 degrees east, Fukushima, Japan. For anyone who is unaware why Fukushima is a place you do not want to visit, it is home to the second largest nuclear disaster ever. In 2011, a major earthquake hit Fukushima damaging a power plant causing the city to evacuate. Since then no one has been allowed to return and the situation has improved but it is not looking great. In order to keep the core cool of this power plant that melted down, they are constantly pouring water on top of them. This water is then contaminated with radiation obviously and they must contain it so it doesn't spread. But they are running out of places to put this contaminated water. Also the city is now 
overgrown with vegetation. With the absence of people, the forests have started to reclaim what was rightfully theirs. And with it has brought a little bit of wildlife. I talked about this in a previous video, but I wanted to mention again because this is actually crazy. Radioactive wild boars have come into Fukushima and are thriving. For whatever reason, they do not seem to be afraid of radiation and they are staking their claim on the land. This is how monster movies start. Next thing you know, we're gonna have giant mutant pigs swimming across the Pacific Ocean coming here to eat the West. At number six, we have two degrees south, 36 degrees east, Lake Natron, Tanzania. From a distance, this lake seems like a bronze wonder. The color and stillness looks like something pulled right out of a travel magazine. But this is the last lake you'd want to take a swim in. There is only three things that have managed to live in this lake. One species of fish, one type of flamingo, and some algae. Everything else that touches this water dies extremely fast. Why is that? Well, the pH in the lake can sit around 9 and sometimes stretch up to 10.5. The animals that call this place home have adapted to the harsh conditions. But let's say a bird unfamiliar with the area decides to take a dip. Their eyes and skin will be burned from the high pH levels and the ending result will look like they've been hit with Medusa's gaze. At number 5, we have 44 degrees south, 71 degrees west, Mount Washington, USA. Alright, we did a couple places in the excruciating heat and now it's time to head into the bitter cold. Mount Washington is freezing and it has temperatures that can reach 40 below. Fun fact about 40 below, that's where the two scales of Celsius and Fahrenheit meet. You can share that with your friends next time you're freezing to death in the minus 40 weather. I'm sure they'll love that little tidbit of information while their nose peels off. And if the brutal cold wasn't enough to make you want to avoid this place, it also has the fastest winds ever recorded on a mountain. 238 miles per hour. That's over 300 kilometers per hour. That's stronger than a category 5 hurricane. The wind is so strong it will give your face freezer burn right before it rips it off and sends it hurling down the mountain. At number 4 on the list we have 24 degrees south, 46 degrees west, Snake Island, Brazil. I didn't make this place up. I know it sounds like something pulled out of a cheesy low budget 80s action movie but it's real and it has enough snakes living there to make the cast of The Real Housewives for decades. There is one snake for every square foot. I don't have a fear of snakes, but there's still no way I'm going to get close to this place. Especially since almost every species on the island is extremely venomous. There's even rumors that snakes will swim off the island to boats that are too close and kill the people on board and then eat them. I even heard there's a symbiotic relationship with the birds on the island and the snakes on the island where the birds will pick up the snakes and then drop them on people who are on the island so they get like an air attack and kill them. That one I made up. I just kind of wanted to hype up the story a little bit more. But you're real biggest worry is about getting bitten and then having to ride in a boat back to the mainland to go see a doctor. It's a 90 kilometer trip so you would probably be dead before you got anywhere close to any sort of medical attention. At number 3 we have 3 degrees north, 98 degrees east, Sinabung Volcano, Indonesia. I mean who wouldn't want to live right next to an active volcano? It seems like a swell place to raise a family. But you guys are probably wondering, well you can live next to an active volcano but that doesn't mean it's going to blow up all the time. Well but between the years 2010 and 2016, Cinnabung has popped off five times in six years. That is crazy. This place has blown up more times in six years than Conor McGregor has fought. And he is a professional fighter, huh? I hope he doesn't find me and like, kick my ass. I don't know, that could happen. I'm sure it's a beautiful place, but it would be hard to tell with all the constant lava flowing through it. This volcano is part of the Ring of Fire, which is a string of volcanoes lining up with tectonic plates that erupt more often than usual. So I'm not eager to check this place out, but you guys can go for me. At number two, we have 25 degrees north, 70 degrees west, the Bermuda Triangle. Any kid growing up in the 90s heard about the Bermuda Triangle again and again. It was the plot point in every show from Scooby Doo to Jackie Chan's adventures. Yo, remember Jackie Chan had a cartoon and it was absolute fire? That cartoon was so good. Anyways, the Bermuda the Triangle is a large chunk of the Atlantic situated between Florida, Bermuda, and Puerto Rico and has been a hot spot for people disappearing. Planes, boats, rescue missions all have vanished without a trace and it leaves people baffled as to what is going on. Some people think it's a hot spot for storms to kick up, other people say there's magnetic forces that destroy navigation equipment. The crazier theories suggest that the Bermuda Triangle is a gateway for interdimensional travel, that aliens use this to fly across the universe in an instant. Even 
though there's a lot of disappearances from this area, many of them have been explained, but there's still a ton of cases that leave people wondering what's going on in this mysterious chunk of ocean. Ugh, I don't know why I did that tongue thing at the end. And number one on our list is 40 degrees north, 58 degrees east, the Darvaza gas crater, Turkmenistan. Right off the bat, this place is nicknamed the door to hell. It has an even creepier nickname than that other hell place. Not the place you want to spend your honeymoon, unless you're both super metal, then it's probably like a great choice. Turkmenistan has a massive natural gas reserve, and that has been the fuel to the door to hell. It was back in 1971 when Turkmenistan was still part of the Soviet Union. There was construction underway, and a drilling operation caused a large amount of the earth to collapse in. And what started flowing out of it? A toxic gas. If it wasn't dealt with quickly, it would have poisoned the entire area. Good news though, the gas was flammable, so the Soviets figured, we'll just light it on fire, it'll burn for a little while, and then we'll get back to work, comrade. Well, it did catch on fire, and then it did burn, but it never stopped. It has been burning since 1971, and has no sign of going out anytime soon. And if a giant pit of fire wasn't enough to keep you away, Turkmenistan is run by a dictator. Have a nice vacation. At number 10, we have 36 degrees north, 117 degrees west, Death Valley, USA. One of the worst spots in America to get lost on a hiking trip. Now, thanks to air conditioned cars and cell phones, most people won't meet their end in this wasteland. But back when pioneers had to cross this desert, it was one of the most challenging tasks imaginable. If you were caught out there without supplies, you would last less than a day. Either dehydration, sunstroke, or one of the many predators living out there would make you meet your end faster than a pizza pocket when I'm drunk. Death Valley has the highest recorded temperature on the planet, clocking in at 57 degrees Celsius. The whole joke about being hot enough to fry an egg on the sidewalk is real there. Except it won't be an egg, it will be your intestines as a vulture rips them out of your stomach. And if you manage to make it through the day into the night, the temperature will plummet. In the winter, it can get as cold as minus 10 Celsius. As beautiful as the desert can be, I don't think I would want this to be my next vacation spot. If you're ever traveling through there, make sure you bring a ton of water and some blankets just in case your car breaks down. Uh, that would suck. At number nine, we have the Siatrum River in Indonesia. In places all over the world, resources are so tight that people are forced to exploit their environment. The Siatrum River is a living representation of this. It's located in Indonesia, and there's very little infrastructure around there for these people to live a clean and healthy life. So they resort to taking what they can from the land. This river is extremely polluted because the five million people who live there have to use it to bathe, water crops, dispose of waste, dispose of garbage, and drink. The river has been so so polluted that any wildlife that used to call this place home has either left or died. It is terrible to see a place where people are forced to live without clean drinking water. At number 8 we have the Queen's Bath, Hawaii. There are beautiful beaches, parties everywhere, and enough drunk tourists to make a conga line all the way to the American mainland. But it's the wonderful attractions that can lure people into a false sense of security. On the island of Kauai, there is an absolutely breathtaking formation called the Queen's Bath. It is a natural pool formed right into the rock bed of the island. It kind of looks like a place royalty would come to dip their feet in while they drink champagne and laugh about stealing the world's resources. But this place is similar to a Venus flytrap. Gorgeous to look at, but when you get too close it can be dangerous. People will often go swimming in the queen's bath, and then a very strong wave will come through and either bash them against the rocks or wash them out to sea. There are tons of warning signs trying to tell tourists that they should not go swimming in this pool. But every year, tourists either drown or need to be rescued. At number 7 we have Syria. Syria has been in constant turmoil for many years. First there was constant civil war, the rebel soldiers battling the government every single day in an attempt to liberate Syria from the oppressive government. This meant that warfare was commonplace in the streets. And then ISIS took over a major chunk of Syria, which obviously meant that the violence only escalated. Then the American troops had to come in and try and push out ISIS, which meant even more war. It seems like the struggles in Syria will never end. Can everyone there just like call a timeout? Like everyone just stop fighting for two minutes and then just be friends and see what happens. I think that is the worst advice I have ever given anyone. Yeah, Che, you can stop war by everyone just being friends. And that's why I'm making top 10 lists and I'm not in politics. At number 6 we have Omayakon, Russia. Here's something about me, I love warm weather. If it's 40 plus celsius and I'm sweating at home just from putting on my pants, I've never been happier. So this place would be hell on earth for me. Omayakon is the coldest inhabited place in the world. 500 people live there year round for some unknown reason. They must like it when it gets so cold that your eyeballs freeze inside your head, which is a real thing that can happen. The temperature can drop to negative 62 degrees celsius. That's 
minus 80 Fahrenheit. It would be so cold I would want to cry out, but my tear tucks would be frozen, so all I would be able to do is scream and pray for death. One of the weirdest things about this place is it's actually a tourist attraction. People will choose to go to the coldest village on the earth rather than eating pizza in Italy. If you're that kind of person, don't talk to me. I don't need your weird vibes getting on me. I'm vibing all the time. I don't want your bad cold vibes in my life, okay? One of the main tourist attractions at this place is a giant thermometer that will remind you how much fun you're having by showing you the lip slicing temperatures. And one time, it got so cold in this village that the thermometer broke. What? The hell. And number five, we have Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. This one is a toss up. Like, I would probably go to Rio. Rio's an amazing city. It's filled with some of the most gorgeous people you've ever seen in your life. They have the amazing Carnival Festival where you can party for like days and probably fall in and out of love 10 times. Brazilian food is amazing. You can go to a Brazilian steakhouse and eat enough meat that you'll get meat sweats that soak right through your shoes. But Rio definitely has a darker side. Rio is one of the most dangerous cities on the planet. There is a ton of gang violence with Rio being a major hotspot for drug trafficking and gun trade. You also have a good chance of getting kidnapped or murdered. So when you're picking your next vacation spot, you gotta decide how bad you want to see people dance on a float during carnival. At number 4 we have Lake Nyos, Cameroon. Back in August of 1986, a giant cloud of carbon dioxide erupted out of the bottom of Lake Nyos. This invisible cloud of death spread fast at 50 kilometers an hour and ended up killing 1700 people. This is the kind of thing where legends of God Gods and monsters come from. If this happened when an ancient civilization was living there, they wouldn't have known that this was caused by a giant carbon cloud from a nearby volcano. They would have thought it was some sort of demonic forest and they needed to sacrifice things. They would have been afraid of this lake until the end of time. But thankfully, we have computers to tell us what happened. A seismic shift caused gas from a volcano to come through Lake Nyos. This is normal, but the gas usually is released slowly, not in these massive amounts like this. Since this happened, scientists have developed a way to extract gas from the base of the lake preventing it from happening again, but even though they're taking safety measures, you won't catch me anywhere near this place. At number 3 we have the Ganges River, India. The Ganges River in India is one of the most polluted rivers on the planet. If you thought the river Siatra was bad, it has nothing on the Ganges. This river is used for sewage, personal waste, and the waste of major companies. And get this, over 500 million people use this river regularly. Some people come visit it every day because they believe it has holy powers that can heal you, which is absolutely absolutely not true. The river is actually packed with harmful chemicals that cause cancer. From all the constant traffic of people visiting the river, it's only getting more polluted. There is trash that is left there every day from all the people that make the trip. And there isn't even a proper cleaning system, so the problem is only getting worse. At number 2 we have the Skeleton Coast, Namibia. This place has all the pieces of an environment that is trying to kill you. I mean it's called the Skeleton Coast for God's sake. They didn't call it sexy fun margarita beach. No they didn't. First off we have very harsh waters. The tides and waves are so unpredictable that you can see the shells of all the shipwrecks along the coast. Everything from major tankers to little tugboats can be seen broken down along this beach. If you are one of the people who are unlucky enough to get shipwrecked here and survive by swimming to the mainland, you would now be in one of the worst deserts on the planet. It is extremely dry with almost zero water sources and spans hundreds of kilometers. There's also this eerie fog effect that comes off the ocean and covers the desert, meaning you could be lost in a brutal landscape without being able to see 10 feet in front of you because the fog is so thick. That sounds like a pleasant way to die. At number 1 we have Caracas, Venezuela. Ok for the number 1 spot we have one of the most hostile cities on the planet so strap in. The entire country of Venezuela has been at war with its own government for years now. Protesters are shot and killed in the streets on a regular basis and all this chaos has seemed to be boiled down to Caracas. People desperately want their freedom from the oppressive government and on top of that there is an insane amount of organized crime. You have drug lords moving products to the city constantly and hijackings are a regular occurrence. And it's suggested that you never wear anything expensive when you are walking through the street because people will rob it right off your body. So leave your Gucci sneakers at home unless you want to be walking around barefoot. To give you a little perspective, if you google countries with the most murders right now, Caracas will be number 3. At number 10 we have this image right here that was posted onto reddit. These black guys were seen on the porch pointing a big gun at google vehicles as it drove by. After capturing these images they need for google earth. Google has since blurred out the gun, but a reddit user was able to screenshot this image before it became censored. What's even more disturbing was a 17 month old girl was found dead at the same house 
in an earlier picture that was taken by Google Earth. All right, let's move right along. Number nine, this is a dumpster in Chile that appears to have mummified dead bodies dumped in it. I'm really hoping there is some sort of costume store nearby or this picture was just taken after Halloween, but who knows? Next up on this list, just like that, number eight. So this image is from the Netherlands and it appears that there is someone dragging a dead body to the edge to dump it. Is that the real life Dexter Morgan? Didn't Dexter dump his bodies in the water? And also, isn't there a new Dexter coming out? I'm super excited. Well, going back to this picture here, we actually found the coordinates on Google and searched it before this video and there is now a new image without anyone on the pier. So this was definitely strange and scary. And Google's probably like, oh, we just captured like a live situation happening here. I think people looked into this picture and I'm pretty sure it was just a wet dog. And, and the, what people are seeing as, as blood is just water. Well, at least that's what I'm hoping. Number seven. This image is from France. It has sparked a ton of questions on the internet about what on earth that creature is standing on the balcony. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Also, if you guys are liking this video, make sure to hit the like button because it really helps us out. It's prompted several paranormal and otherworldly folks to look further into it. But now if you search that same location, the entire camera is blurry and nothing can be seen. Number six. Hopefully CCTV helped save this woman. Well, hopefully she was found safe and alive after this image was captured. This might have been the moment she was kidnapped and thrown into a trunk of a car by two men. All right, let's move on to number five. Is this real life right now? I don't know what that is. Obviously, Google Maps messed up on this one. Technology isn't 100%, unless unless Elon Musk made it, it's 100%. But I don't know what that is, like an, like an owl? Yeah, I think it just got split. Is that an owl? <laughs> it is an owl? No, oh, it isn't. <laughs> it's definitely a, it's confirmed cat. <laughs> okay, so this one is less scary and more of a funny picture just to lighten the mood a little bit, but it's pretty weird if you ask me. I'm hoping that this is just a glitch, a real life glitch, or maybe just a simple glitch in the camera. Maybe this is a new discovery. Maybe this is a new species. What do we name it? Guys, what do we name it? Tell me in the comment section below. You guys are gonna put like half cat, half owl. You guys are gonna troll me hard. Oh my God, Landon thought that was an owl. <laughs> Some of you guys did as well, all right? Okay, I, I might be the only one. Next up, number four. Well, we're looking at this picture. This is one of the most famous strange Google Map Street view finds out there. And I have to hope that someone knew the cameras was hitting that area. And this is just a setup, you know, just to be funny. There's a lot of pranks out there, a lot of funny business going on out there. Well, otherwise it means that this thing actually exists and I don't like thinking about it at all. Can anyone confirm if this was found near Area 51? What do you guys think is in Area 51? What is President Donald Trump hiding in Area 51? Coming in at number three, all right, well, we have this. We're looking at it right now. Well, this is a picture of blood lake it was found on google maps and the lakes surrounding it are normal colors so why is this one such a deep blood red i mean i don't do we do we want to know the answer to this one well apparently it is believed that a slaughterhouse nearby has run off to this body of water so they're just slaughtering animals and that could be blood the blood could just be draining into it i really don't think that's very sanitary all right number two i don't even know what to say about this one it's so odd to me that cars would be normally driving by with people dressed like this this has to be a prank Foozy Tube, is that you? Nelk Boys, is that you guys? Were they filming a music video of some sort? I have so many questions. I bet the real story is hilarious. If you have any ideas on what on earth is happening here, let me know. Well, let me know about any of these, but especially that half cat, half owl picture. Let, let me know if it's actual owl. Finally on our list at number one, we have this picture right here. Okay, this is so weird. This is pulled directly from Google Images. So this is in Castle stand and researchers say this isn't satanic at all and it's just an outline of the park that is there I'm gonna go ahead and say that that is a lie no way this is just innocent starting off this countdown we have the NSA spy hubs we all know that the NSA is spying on us okay that's old news I mean in 2013 former contractor for the CIA Edward Snowden revealed that the NSA was collecting phone records of 
millions of Americans and spying on us through our phone calls. Well, it turns out they have multiple top secret bases. Half of them, we don't even know where they're located. We just know that they're out there. Somewhere. These spy hubs are often windowless skyscrapers. There are some in Atlanta, Dallas, Chicago, Los Angeles, New York City, San Francisco, Seattle, and of course, Washington DC. These buildings though, aren't regular buildings. No, no, of course not. They are highly secure and guarded. In fact, they are built to withstand terrorist attacks, nuclear attacks, and natural disasters. So not only do we not know where they're located, we don't know what they're doing in all of these hubs besides spying on American citizens. So you better behave. They're watching. Always watching. Up next, number nine, we have the creepy Scientology base. The Church of Scientology has been involved in a ton of controversy over the years. From its treatment of its members to its highly secretive practices, a lot of people are actually scared of this religion. For people that aren't members, it's actually pretty hard to know what exactly is going on inside of their buildings. One of their churches called Trementina is one of the properties owned by Scientology that can be seen on Google Maps over in New Mexico. Well, take a look for yourselves. You guys are looking at it right now. Okay, what the heck is happening inside of this building? They say that they use it to preserve books and movies, uh, but honestly, who knows? They could be performing satanic rituals for all we know. Nuclear testing facility makes its way onto this list at number eight. Here we have a picture of a Google satellite image of a nuclear testing facility located in Nevada. So yeah, probably pretty close to Area 51. I think the reason why you should never visit this location is it's highly obvious. It's definitely not open to the public and I'm not sure why you would want to even attempt to step foot near this location and that's because it is full of so much radiation. Mushroom clouds can be seen up to 100 miles away in the distance so this actually caused a lot more tourists wanting to visit Las Vegas. My idea of a good time does not involve slot machines and clouds of nuclear radiation but that's just my opinion. It's actually really scary to think about it that the fact that we are testing deadly nuclear weapons. How Town in New Baltimore brings us to number seven. A Google Street View car managed to capture this image on their camera. Could this just be an equipment glitch or could something more sinister be going on in this small town? Apparently people in this area are saying that there is a portal to hell in the area. Residents of New Baltimore have been reported that their little town has been taken over by evil demonic entities. So of course Google sent out a car to get, you know, better pictures, more updated pictures, more accurate pictures. How about you bring them a couple of priests and uh, it's, it's time to bless the area. Next up, number six, we have China's Area 51. What you're looking at right now could actually be China's version of Area 51. Is this real life right now? These strange white lines were discovered on Google Maps in the middle of China's Gobi Desert, and this image struck so many conversations online about what it could be. Most people believe that it's a calibration pattern for spy satellites, but then there are others that say that these lines prove aliens exist. These lines are located near the headquarters of China's space program. But unfortunately, we may never know the truth about what is really going on here. A very haunted bridge brings us to number five. This is Booger Holler Bridge, and if you value your life, well, you will never want to set foot or attempt to cross it, and that's because it is known to be extremely haunted. Legend has it that a father and son drowned while trying to cross the low bridge on a horse and buggy many, many years ago. And then there's another story about a woman and her child drowning when their car stalled on the bridge, and the car was thrown into the the river due to the strong current. People have even said that they can hear screams from the bridge and people do satanic practices on it for some reason. So needless to say the Google Street View car got close to the bridge but they didn't dare cross it. Number four, we have a creepy doll village. If you don't like looking at scary life-sized human dolls, then you'll never want to visit a small village in Nagaro, Japan. But in case you're curious, well here's a taste of what you'll find there. Well, I told you that these dolls were creepy, but that's not all. Apparently an old lady will make a new doll every time someone in the village dies. So the amount of dolls outnumber the amount of people actually living in the village by about 10 to 1. I mean, could you imagine walking around at night and seeing all of these creepy dolls just staring at you? Couldn't they just be placed inside of an art gallery or something? This whole thing just makes me uncomfortable. So you know what, let's get the heck away from it and let's move on. Let's see what we have next. 
Scary underwater pyramids is up next at number three. Well, this is an image taken from Google Maps that shows us that some creepy underwater pyramids might be lurking at the bottom of the ocean over in the Bahamas. This image sparked a lot of controversies when people said that these underwater pyramids can prove that aliens might be living among us. More reasonable people believe that these pyramids could have been made by an ancient civilization. But they also admit that we still can't rule out the existence of alien life forms, you know, just yet. A nuclear fallout zone steps onto this list at number two. Primpyat, Ukraine, has a bad reputation of being the site of the worst nuclear disaster in history. It's literally a ghost town with abandoned buildings that will probably never be lived in for a very long time. But the creepiest part of this town has to be this picture right here. Well, take a look for yourselves. It's literally a room full of old gas masks that were left behind. I don't know what's scarier, the amount of gas masks or the fact that there were child-sized gas masks left inside of an abandoned school. And topping this list, in at number one, we have one of the most dangerous cities on Earth. This right here is El Bronx, Colombia. And even though the city is completely demolished now, it was once known as the most dangerous city on Earth. This was a neighborhood that was known for child prostitution and murder. Put it this way, if you found yourself walking the streets of this neighborhood, something awful would probably happen to you. Some of these buildings also had a lot of rotting murder victims inside, and gangs used to capture and feed rival gang members to starving dogs just to send the other gang a message. Starting off with number 10 is the underwater base. Now, Argentine re Researcher Marcelo Igazusta found what he believes to be an underwater alien base. The object is 8.5 miles long and it seems to be a pyramid of some kind. It's located right off the coast of Mexico near the ancient Aztec and Mayan pyramids, which could be coincidental or totally random. Since this pyramid has an 8.5 mile base, that catapults it into being the biggest pyramid in the world. Forget Egypt, humans could have never built something like that, especially underwater, so Marcelo believes only aliens could have accomplished it. I mean, cut us some more slack, we're better than that. He believes either the base was there from before or an alien craft landed in the water and was built to do so and they just never left. And coming in at number 9 is the Arctic landing. So okay, bit of fake advertisement, this one isn't located in the Arctic, it's actually located in Antarctica. Not the same thing you guys. Either way, Russian UFO enthusiast Valentin Degretev claims he found an alien crash site in Antarctica. There seems to be a saucer shaped dent in the snow like the flying saucer landed on its side and just went straight through the snow. I hope you got what I meant when I did that. <laughs> I mean, I need to speculate and offer other explanations like, okay, is the ice breaking apart underneath there and that's what's causing the slit? But I feel like that's far-fetched, but then again, so is a flying saucer. But it is peculiar and it's surrounded by ridges and flat snow, so it's just a big, unexplainable anomaly. I don't know, guys. Is it just a random slit? Is it an alien saucer? I don't really know. At number 8 we have the Martian Twins. Now during the Kofun era in Japan, which was during 300 to 538 AD, they used to build Kofun tombs. And these tombs were for people of the ruling class and they were shaped like keyholes most commonly and surrounded by water. That's all well and good, but alien hunters spotted a mound on Mars that looked identical to one specific Kofun era tomb. Now they fully believe that the suspicious similarities between both features is evidence that Martians settled on Earth centuries ago after a catastrophic unknown event forced them to leave the red planet. They ended up building a similar structure on Earth and then going back to Mars when it was finally appropriate. But again, I feel like this whole theory is speculation. How do we know what this catastrophic unknown event was and if it even happened? If aliens have the technology to travel to another planet and set up camp there, surely they could have evaded whichever terrible thing happened on Mars? Is that too much to ask? I don't think it is. I don't think my expectations are that high, you guys. Plausible. Filling on number 7 slot is the alien base. Now back in April of this year, a few UFO hunters were searching Google Earth for some sus looking and boy did they find it. There's this really weird 500 meter long object off the coast of Antarctica that from the top looks like an iceberg but literally isn't. The left of it is oddly straight and the top has vertical ridges on it making it not look like an iceberg at all. According to UFO sightings hotspot it doesn't fit the description of an iceberg and I quote, I'm not an iceberg expert but this object is really peculiar and looks like a vessel disguised as an iceberg. I have to fully agree with you honestly, I feel like the Aliens were probably like, hey, just cover the top in an ice sheet. These dumb humans won't notice the difference. But we did. We are on to you. Dumb humans, 
may have taken us a few years, but we got there. Now at number 6 is bad parking. I just found this one hilarious because alien life is meant to be so advanced and ahead of us and I look at this image and I'm like, were you drunk driving? Like this is shockingly bad. Now the image was located by YouTube channel Secure Team 10 who found it crash landed in a restricted part of Arizona with a white blacked out car parked next to it. CIA perhaps? Probably. Now the flying saucer looks really old fashioned if anything, like it's not slick or thin and I'm pretty sure it landed upside down which is what's really funny to me. Like how do you mess up a landing that badly? Maybe the aliens decide to take one of the old ones for a ride and then didn't realize how outdated it was and then boom, disaster, flipped it over. You're gonna be grounded when you get back to your planet. Coming in at number 5 is the slit. In the very remote British territory of South Georgia, a really strange thing was found in the snow and no we're not talking about my ex but wow he keeps popping up in these videos. Now alien hunting youtube channel Secure Team 10 found a slit in the snow that they claim has all the signs that point to a UFO crash landing. It has the exact trajectory of an angular flying object that came to a screeching halt in the snow. Now the imprint isn't a plane otherwise we would have known, it's not military craft or we would have known and the crash is too narrow and small to be anything other than an alien craft. But I mean I don't really know, I think calling every weird slit in the snow an alien crash landing is a bit of a cop out but alien hunters clearly know better than I do so I'ma just leave it to the experts. At number 4 is the flying saucer, clearly you can tell I'm running out of title ideas and I mean there's only so many different ways you can say spaceship ok? Either way youtube channel secure team found an image on google earth they believe is a flying saucer. Located in the south South Pole, the circular object in question is sticking out of a mountain amongst the snow. But the rocky areas around it are quite rigid and randomly cut, whereas this object is oddly round and like perfectly round at that. And I can't zoom in enough to tell if it's just a round cut of water that's randomly there or if it's actually alien aircraft. But since I've never seen alien aircraft, I don't even know even if I could zoom in, would I know? Who knows? Now there's like a thinner outline inside the actual outline of the round bit which seems unnatural to me like there's no way that bit's natural. Has to be man made or or alien made. But I feel like zooming in more is necessary to get an actual conclusion and alas I can't do that and I'm definitely not going to go to Antarctica just to find out. But you can, and let me know if you do. Filling our number 3 slot is the floating island. Now located in Argentina, back in 2016 UFO sightings daily fully believed this floating island was the entrance to an alien base. On google maps it looks like a random crescent was cut out of the greenery in the area, like there's no other shape like that found nearby or on the continent or in the country for that matter. The island actually moves and rotates in a circle and considering Argentina has had many UFO sightings over the years, it could be possible that aliens have their base underneath this island. Never say never. Now the slit could easily fit a 100 meter UFO through it and no one has actually gone and explored the water beneath the floating island. I think it's just really weird how there's like an oddly perfect circular island that magically got cut out by mother nature and oh it also rotates and moves. Like nah honey that's not mother nature that is alien nature. Now at number 2 are the skid marks. Now in June of this year UFO theorist Scott Waring found what he believed to be an alien crash site in Antarctica because apparently that's the go to landing pad for most aliens on this list. It's located towards the north of the island off the coast of another little island, if you know what that means because I don't since I'm not an Antarctica expert. Now on the image he claims part of the UFO's wing is folded up and its concave area is severely dented. There are evident burn skid marks trailing behind the craft and the craft itself looks to be made of some metallic material. The craft is apparently 96 meters long while the trail it left behind it is nearly 450 meters long so clearly it was a really rough landing. And finally at number 1 is the debated, so even though this one has been debunked I put it as number 1 because it was so widely believed to be an alien crash landing site for so long before you know it obviously wasn't. Now the satellite image shows a mountainous island off the coast of Antarctica. Now in the smooth snow there's a block of something that's crashed into the snow leaving a long deep trail behind it. I mean and I 
get the allegation, it's narrow and how often do things really crash into Antarctica unless it's a UFO? From this list, clearly, so I get why the thought was there. And the trail is quite long, but if you follow the trail back, you'll see the trail goes back to a mountain peak and a bunch of disturbed snow. And how many times did I just say trail in the last 30 seconds? Now people believe an avalanche occurred and debris was what the object was, or perhaps it was a trapped submarine, I don't really know. Either way, debunked, finally. Starting off this countdown, we have when duty calls. I mean, when you gotta go, you gotta go. You would just hope that no one was around to catch you. Don't want an old lady walking her dog to run into you, popping a squat behind a bush and letting one go. And you really don't want a Google car to pass by and catch you in the act and then publish it online for everyone to see. Because that's actually what happened to this guy. Poor dude was trying so hard to be discreet and he just couldn't win. What's worse is that his company's vehicle wasn't blurred. So now if his work sees this, it's probably very easy to identify him. All right, getting even more serious now at number nine, we have Harp. Some of you guys might remember Harp from our other videos. It's a US Air Force research facility with many theories around the work done there, including experiments to control the weather. Regardless of if that's true or not, their base in Alaska is blocked out on Google Maps. You can only really see some weird copy and pasted brownish blocks. Now sure, there might be something very normal going on there, but this is also fuel for the conspiracy theorists. Next up at number 8 now, we have Nordvik Anzi. This is a small part of a town in the Netherlands that has the strangest blur on it that I've seen so far. If you could see underneath that blur, you would see the ESTEC, or the European Space Research and Technology Centre. Now they obviously do important space work there, but why would we not be allowed to see it from above? Above. One theory is that it's hiding rocket technology from rival space agencies. Next up at number seven now, we have the Michael Aff building. This building is in Utah, and although it might sound like it belongs to some nice guy called Michael, it's a bit more serious than that. It's actually an area used by the US Army to test bio and chemical weapons. If you try and view it on Google Map, you just get this weird whited out area with swirls and square patterns. Whatever crazy chemical technology is being concocted there, we are not supposed to see the details. Details. All right, moving on to number six now, we have the KFC Colonel. We've done a few serious ones so far, so here's a little bit of a weird but very real one to lighten the mood. The KFC Colonel's face is automatically blurred on every Google Maps image. Now, I'm sure you guys might be able to find one, but it must have been manually unblurred. You see, this is because Google's face recognition technology automatically blurs out any face it finds for privacy reasons. It got a little bit carried away and blurred the Colonel's face on the front of every single KFC. That's about 19,000 of them. The Google employee who has to manually fix all of that will be busy for quite a while. All right, next up at number five now, we have Princeton Road. In the English town of Stockton on Tees, there is a street called Princeton Road with only a few houses, and one of them is mysteriously blurred out. Some celebrities do this for privacy reasons, but the person who lives there said that they have never requested that Google blur out their home. Ironically, whoever was trying to hide something about this house has earned it a lot more attention because of the mysterious blur. All right, moving on to number four now. We have Grunard Island. This small island off the coast of the UK is less than a mile wide and was where British scientists tested deadly anthrax bombs during the Second World War. They tested them on 60 sheep, all of whom died within 60 days. Ever since then, the area has been a no-go zone. You're not allowed to go there, and the blurred Google Maps image reflects its mysterious nature. All right, at the number three spot now, we have the Garden of Gethsemane. Any Christians watching this video might might recognize this as the place where Jesus was said to have spent his last ever night before his crucifixion. It's also said to be the place where his mother Mary was buried before ascending to heaven. It's also totally blurred out on Google Maps. Why would this be? It's a very famous pilgrimage site. You can go there yourself. It's not hidden away at all. So why is it hidden from above? Very strange indeed. All right, next up at number two now, we have the secret city. This one is actually so secret that I couldn't even find where it was on Google Maps. I had to rely on other people's screenshots of it. The secret city is a blurred out area of Google Maps deep in Russia's Siberian tundra. Now it was thought that nobody lived in that area, but information has leaked out over the years that in 1986, the Soviet Union sealed off dozens of secret cities with over a million people living in them. They attached strange code names to them like Tomsk 7 and Arzamas 16. And some people believe this ominous brown blob on Google Maps is the hidden view of one of these cities. And finally now at 
number one, we have Mururoa Atoll. The world knows about this small Pacific island because for 33 years, from 1966 to 1996, France tested nuclear bombs there. They dropped 193 of them on this small island to see the effects and fine tune their design. The result was incredible environmental damage, leaving the place radioactively contaminated. Perhaps that's why France doesn't want you to see it, as the place is just one thin blur on Google Maps. Coming at number 10 now, we have the Mazda Raceway. This is a paved road racing track in California that was built in 1957, and for some strange reason, it's totally blurred out. I tried searching around for the reason behind this, and I couldn't seem to find anything. It doesn't appear to be anything to do with the military, it's just a normal racing track. Or is it? Why would Mazda want us to not see the track from above? And why would Google agree to this? In our ninth spot today, we have the Pentagram. The sigil of Baphomet is the official insignia of the Church of Satan. So of course many people consider the symbol to be satanic. Well here we have what appears to be this symbol, located on the southern shore of the upper Tobol Reservoir. This symbol is massive, it's roughly 1200 feet or 366 meters in diameter. Many people were wondering, what on earth is this for? Some say it's used for devil worship or sacrifices. Thankfully it's not, but it's still something creepy. It is actually actually an abandoned Soviet era camp, and I believe that the lines that we see that appear to be engraved in the earth are actually roads. What a great design, huh? In our 8th spot, we have the aliens. Are aliens real? Do you believe in them? Well, Google Earth seems to have captured this weird being on a balcony in France. See for yourself. Now, what on earth is that? Is it a weird statue put outside to scare away the neighbors or meddling kids? The dude's face looks like it could be the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. Did they decide to take these pictures on Halloween? Like I have so many questions. Or maybe it's a real alien. At this point, aliens probably do live among us, so we're all aliens. I'm an alien. In our seventh spot, we have the disposed bodies. Now, I don't know what's going on here. Was this an art project gone wrong? Did a clothing store shut down and they had to give away their mannequins? Or is this a scene from Goosebumps? There's something so creepy about these discarded mannequins. Like the fact that they're wrapped up? What if they're the worst? Works of a serial killer. I mean, think about it, okay? It's pretty clever to discard of a body that way. You wrap the cut up body parts to make it look like they aren't real body parts. Meanwhile, they are hidden in plain sight. Please don't get any ideas. I just have an overactive imagination. In reality, it probably just was an art project, just a very creepy one. The guy in the trunk. Now, I have multiple questions for this. And I really don't know if I want to know the answers to them. First off, why is this guy naked? Second, why is he in the trunk of someone's car? Like, are we witnessing a kidnapping or is he escaping a kidnapping? Next, what's with the dog? It better just be taking a nap, okay? There's just so much going on in this picture. Let's just hope that he was intentionally naked and intentionally wanted to go lie down in his trunk for a bit, okay? Like, this could be used as inspiration for the fourth Hangover movie. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Handy Mandy. This next one is not PJ-13, okay? As if that naked man was. But seriously, warning, the next one is for mature audience members only. Because we got two individuals getting frisky in some alleyway. The man can clearly be seen with his pants down, and the woman's hand is in that general direction. So you get what's going on. And if you don't, you're too young to be watching this. Looks like Google is out here ruining everyone's fun. How awkward would it be not only to get caught, but having an image taken of you getting caught and upload it online. In our fourth spot, we have the Creepy Scarecrows. Located in a field in Finland, we have what they call the Silent People, which are a thousand scarecrows lined up in a field. This was done by the artist Riho Kila. No thank you, I'm sorry. I'd be too scared of them like coming alive at night or something. Also the name the Silent People, it's creepy. But hey, at least those will scare away the crows, you know, and anyone for a matter of fact. Moving on to number three, we have the mooning. In April of 2018, an English man named Toby Sullivan was out for a walk with his friend when he spotted the Google car. So he did what any normal person would do. He dropped his drawers and full on mooned the camera. Now, I don't know what was running through his mind when he did this, but I definitely did not need to see his peach. Also, for the longest time, his buttocks was uncensored and people could literally zoom into his crack. Okay, it's a little TMI. But when the photo and Toby's story went viral, Google decided to finally censor this guy's behind. Thank 
gosh. But even with the sensor, you can still fully see this guy's crack, so. Coming in at number two, we have mowing the lawn. Here's another young lad that recognized the Google car and thought, now is my time to shine. This guy was out mowing his lawn when he spotted the car and decided to lift up his shirt and flash the camera. Even though his face is pixelated, you can see he's given Google a funny face, a little ah, oh, you know? I bet him and his family had a big laugh about that one. But seriously, that meant that every time someone looked up his place to get directions or whatnot, that image popped up. Hmm, boy, oh boy. And in our number one spot today, we have the mannequins. We got more creepy mannequins, folks. This time, we know for sure that they are mannequins and not just wrapped up dead bodies. So you may be wondering, hmm, that's an odd way to decorate your lawn. Where is this, a nuclear testing zone? No, no, this is a neighborhood in Santa Rosa, California. Apparently, a neighbor complained, probably a Karen, that this guy's fence was too high for the city's law. So the neighbors lowered their fence, but then in spite, he decorated his yard so that his neighbors wake up every morning to this lovely view. I mean, there's no rules against having mannequins in your yard, so should've just let him have his high fence. That's what you get. Starting off this countdown, we have Snow Saddle. Snow Saddle is a major mountain peak of the Himalayas in Nepal. But if you try to view it from Google Earth, you'll see that the whole area is blacked out, which is obviously suspicious. Why is a mountain peak blurred. What's going on there that has Google blurring it? To this day, no one knows for sure. But of course, there are a number of theories. One theory is that the Nazis had secret expeditions to the Himalayas and found a UFO base in that area. Sounds crazy, right? Well, there have been a number of UFO sightings in that area, so maybe it is a top secret UFO base. Who knows? We don't know. In at number nine, we have the Badlands Guardian. Google Earth has revealed many geological anomalies in the past 10 years, and this one in particular is very impressive indeed. Near Medicine Hat in southeastern Canada, Google Earth picked up what looks like a Native American face in profile wearing a First Nations headdress carved into a rock. Ironically, the clear humanoid looks like it's wearing earphones, although what you're seeing is actually a path and oil well. The resemblance is actually quite uncanny. The face seems to have been formed by the erosion of rainwater on layers of rich clay soil. The face has since been dubbed the Badlands Guardian. From a seemingly natural made phenomenon to a man made extravaganza, in at number 8 we have the world's largest letters. So, what do you do if you're super rich and you want to spend your money on looking super cool? You already have the latest, well, everything. So you kind of need something unique that money can't buy, although actually money can buy you the labor. Hamad bin Habdan al Nayan, <laughs> sorry if I said that wrong, is an Arab sheikh who didn't stop at buying just his own island. No, no, no. He then carved his first name into it so big it could be seen from space. The letters H A M A D are a thousand meters high and two miles long and have been picked up on Google Earth. The letters extend into the ocean and form their own waterway system, which is pretty cool. Speaking of cool stuff found in the water, we have the discovery of an ancient tidal fish trap right here at number 7. Back in 2009, Google Earth produced a satellite image of a strange V-shaped structure in the water off the coast of Poppet Sands in Wales. Since the image was released, it has been discovered that the structure had been submerged unnoticed for a thousand years or so and was actually a fish trap during the Norman Conquest. The discovery led to an investigation by the Pembrokeshire College who were able to discern more about the trap. A thousand years, seriously. Keeping it nautical in at number 6, we have the SS Jassim Shipwreck. In 2003, a Bolivian cargo ferry hit shallow water off the coast of Sudan and was partially capsized. The wreckage was previously known of, but it was first made visible to the general public via Google Earth, which plainly shows the ship on its side. This is one of several shipwrecks visible on Google Earth, which is slowly but surely making our waters more accessible and solving several 
several mysteries of our vast ocean. Another personal favourite shipwreck you can now see on Google Earth is the S World Discoverer which is off the coast of the Solomon Islands. Whilst there was little to no bloodshed on these sunken boats, I can't definitely say the same for our number 5 which is a lake that looks to be made of blood in Iraq. Just outside Sadar city in Iraq there is a blood red lake. While it probably isn't filled with real blood, nobody can quite explain why it's such a vivid red colour. The image was taken by Google Earth in 2007, with many speculating it could be from animal blood by a nearby slaughterhouse, although that would have to be a lot of blood to turn the whole lake that red. Others say it's pollution or sewage, I just don't know. Maybe it's just red, like Killer Lake in Australia is just pink. Weird though. An excellent way that Google Earth has been utilised in the past few years is in criminal cases. The roving camera has often caught images of some crimes in progress, helping injured parties discover more about their cases. Coming in at number 4, we have two thieves identified by Google Maps, which is a part of Google Earth. A 14 year old boy from the Netherlands was having no luck in identifying two teens who stole his bike, wallet and phone in broad daylight. That was until 6 months later when he remembered the day his bike was stolen was also the day that he saw a google car driving around his neighbourhood. Lo and behold, as he viewed his local area on google street view, he found an image of himself riding his bike with two people approaching behind him. After the boy contacted the authorities, google released the original image to the Dutch police who found the boys. They turned out to be a pair of twins who were no stranger to crime in the area. Case solved. So coming in at number 3 of our top 10 Google Earth discoveries, we have a secret underground layer from the Church of Scientology. Spotted in the New Mexico desert, Google Earth picked up a symbol, two overlapping circles, thought to belong to the Church of Technology, a branch of the Church of Scientology. The symbol, visible only from the air, is near the religion's Trementina base as well as close to a mile long landing strip. It is thought that the base leads to underground tunnels, eventually leading to a vault containing the works from church founder L. Ron Hubbard. So we are living in the 21st century, in fact we're almost a quarter of the way through it, so you would have thought with all the technology available to us that we will have discovered everything we need to know about our planet. Apparently not. Just over 10 years ago Google Earth helped biologists discover a new rainforest, not only that, it is thought to be the largest rainforest in southern Africa. The rainforest on Mount Mebu in Mozambique was discovered by Dr Julian Bayliss. He was browsing Google Earth to look for medium altitude forests as part of a Royal Botanic Gardens Q project. As he looked, he discovered what looked like an undocumented area of rainforest, which led to research teams exploring further. They soon discovered the forest in the flesh, so to speak, and it is a whopping 7,800 hectares. It also houses some species previously unknown to scientists. Ok, so up next at number 1, we have one of the most important and life saving Google Earth discoveries ever made, and that has to be the location of many of the Cambodian minefields. Working alongside charity Halo Trust, Google has been able to map out areas with potential mines in Cambodia. With the help of Google Earth Pro, Halo are able to survey dangerous areas more closely, allowing them a clear and deeper view where mines could be. Then when they investigate the areas, they are able to defuse many of them. The company has said that Google Earth has revolutionised the way we see and browse the world, which I couldn't agree with more. Hooray for Google Earth! So guys, did you enjoy this video? Should we make a part 2? This is just the tip of the iceberg of all of the cool stuff that you can see on Google Earth, so if you haven't downloaded it or just at least browse the street that you live on, then do so. I for one absolutely love browsing places I haven't been yet, like Japan and China, just to check out a kind of feeling of what it would be like. So. Number 10, we have the Boneyard in Arizona. Tucson, Arizona is the final resting place of many old aeroplanes. At the Davis Monthan Air Force Base is the world's largest so called boneyard for retired planes. It houses some 4,000 in this desert location. While not first discovered by Google Earth, the Google satellite images sparked worldwide interest in this eerie yet fascinating location, which has since become a popular tourist attraction. The base hosts 
all kinds of interesting aviation models in various states of disarray, including the notorious B-52 bomber. I for one really want to go there. This next discovery is a fantastic Google Earth find. Moving on to number 9 we have Baker Lake. Located in Nunavut, Canada, Google Earth is letting you see none of it. Get it? Like none of it? <laughs> Sorry, I love my buns. So if you look it up on Google Maps, it's weird because you see just a black strip covering a large area near the lake. What's it blocking? Again, we don't know for sure, but we have some crazy conspiracies. One theory is that the strip is concealing extraterrestrial beacons that help the navigation of the crafts, or that it's a craft landing strip. I don't know. They also say that this area would be perfect for the beacons since snow creates a powerful electromagnetic field that helps send a better signal. What do you think though? Let me know in the comments below. In our eighth spot we have the Pacific Northwest Blur. Here is a view of the area close to the Washington Oregon border. And would you look at that? There's a random patch blacked out. To this day, no one knows what that is. But something is there that Google doesn't want us to see. In fact, some people believe that it is a HARP site or H-A-A-R-P. HARP is said to be a military program that weaponizes weather and causes natural disasters like floods, earthquakes, droughts, you get it. Now some people have actually traveled to that area to see what's up, but unfortunately haven't been able to find anything. Kind of suspicious, like what does Google know? Though we don't know. A whole lot, that's what. In our seventh spot, we have 2207 Seymour Avenue. This is the address to a home located in Cleveland, Ohio. A home in which a horrific crime took place. A crime that people don't like to talk about. From 2002 to 2004, Adriel Castro kidnapped three young women Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Georgina de Jesus. He kept them captive in his home until 2013 when Amanda Berry escaped with her daughter and contacted the police. Police came to his house and rescued the other women. This house has since been blurred on Google Maps due to the horrific crimes that took place inside. In fact, it was given the name the House of Horrors. But in 2013, it was actually demolished to help the victims move on from their traumatizing past. In our sixth spot, we have Valencia City. Located in the Philippines, Valencia City is one of the largest and most populated cities in the province of Budkanan. It's home to over 190,000 people. People. It's even a popular tourist spot. But if you want to find it on Google Earth, you can't. The whole city is just blurred out. This was apparently done under government orders. Valencia City is home to their government's headquarters. It's said to house a top secret missile defense program. Others say that they do missile testing there, but that hasn't been proven, so we really don't know. It's just weird that the whole city is blurred out, not just a single area. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Amchitka Island. Located in Alaska, sections of this island are blurred out and no one really knows why this is. But it may have to do with the nuclear testing that once took place there. From the 1950s to the 1970s, this island was the site of US underground nuclear testing. Nowadays, they are running tests to see if the island has any radioactive leakage there. If there isn't, then in 2025, it could become a wildlife reserve. But again, why is half the island blurred out? Maybe that's the section where the nuclear testing took place. But why is it still blurred? A lot of people think that the military is doing some suspicious illegal activities there. We just don't know what. Moving on, at number four, we have Vokel Air Base. Located in the Netherlands, we have the Vokel Air Base, which is a military air base used by the Royal Netherlands Air Force. According to former Dutch Prime Minister, there are 22 US nuclear bombs being stored in bunkers of this airspace, which is one of the many reasons as to why it appears pixelated on Google Earth. You got thermonuclear bombs, all the way to bombs that are said to be four times powerful as the ones used on the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now for the longest time, the place was just rumored to have nukes. It wasn't known for sure. That was until 2013 when the Prime Minister let it slip. He said, and I quote, I would never have thought those silly things would still be there in 2013. I think they are an absolutely pointless part of a tradition in military thinking. In our third spot, we have the mysterious Russian site. Located in the Siberian tundra, close to the city of Egvikinot. I know I said that wrong. I literally looked up the pronunciation, but there is nothing out there, so I apologize. 
Egvino, Egvigno. I'm so sorry. Anyways, the area is blurred out on Google Earth and no one knows why. I've been saying that a lot this video, but it's true. No one knows why. But it didn't always appear like this. At one point, they had edited the satellite imagery. They cut out a section around Egvinat, that place I don't know how to say, and pasted it over whatever they wanted to blur. They thought it would make it less obvious. But apparently on Russian maps, they had the area blurred with a black box. So what's going on in that area? Some say it's harp again. Others say there's a large gold deposit in that area, so they don't want people finding that out. Others say it's a ballistic missile testing site. Coming in at number two, we have the murder scene. Google Earth is a snitch, y'all, okay? A couple of years ago, they caught a murder on camera. It shows a dark figure standing by a body laying down on the ground by some abandoned train tracks. That's all we know. Obviously, due to it being disturbing in nature, they don't want people seeing it. And in our number one spot today, we have the poor donkey. Now, this has to be one of the funniest, yet saddest things caught on Google Earth slash maps. So you know how they have that van with the camera that drives along and it just snaps photos like every second in every direction? Well, while going along, it captured a donkey at the side of the road. Seconds later, if you click down the road and you turn back, the donkey's still there, just now laying on the floor. It had been hit by the Google Earth truck. It's pretty sad, rest in peace, donkey. But that doesn't look too good on the company if they're going around and hitting and killing animals. At number 10, we have Mogadishu, Somalia. All right, we're gonna kick off this list with a place that has all the key points in a place you do not want to visit. Do they have kidnappings? Oh, you better believe it. Tourists who make the mistake of traveling alone can often get a burlap sack put right over their head and be on a one-way ticket to Ransom Town. If you are an American, there is an increased chance of you getting scooped up, so keep an eye out. Actually, it is recommended that you travel with a bodyguard. Okay, so they have that, but do they also have gangs? Yes, sir, they do. Gang violence is a a regular thing and civilians are killed all the time. And the cherry on top is there also is a very unstable government with a military constantly walking through the streets. Not to mention the people are suffering. So unless you're traveling with military protection and you have the need to stabilize an unstable country, maybe choose Cancun for your next vacation. And at number 10, we have the Devil's Hole. I mean, the name speaks for itself. It's as easy to stay away from a cave with a name like this. This place has a distinction of being known as the most haunted place in western New York. And it's for a good reason. According to the native folklore, the Iroquois said that a demonic serpent named Evil One lived inside of the cave. People who would go inside of it will either never come out again or they will come out with their hair turned white. But things get worse as we go back in time to the Devil's Hole Massacre of 1763. A group of warriors used the Devil's Hole to attack soldiers. It was a complete bloodbath and 81 British soldiers were killed and their bodies were thrown into the cave to rot and decompose. In at number 9, this image is a little hard to see but if you guys see in the forest, okay let me zoom in a little bit, you can see that this guy's wearing a gas mask. I mean is this real life right now? What is about to happen? If I was Google, I would definitely get the police to investigate this in order to determine if this guy's gonna like throw some gas or smoke bombs or I don't know. In at number 8, this image is gonna creep you out. So here is the image. These these are normal looking cars on the road, right? If you zoom in right about there over to the left, this little girl appears to be dead. Well, there was an investigation done after this image was seen online and it appeared that the girl, she wasn't actually dead. She was pretending to be dead. And the reason why she was pretending to be dead is because she wanted to not go to school. So if she was dead, she doesn't have to go to school. But what's the chances of that picture being taken at that exact moment? And I'm not sure what the educational system is like in this town, but I mean, there are better ways to get out of school. All right, at number seven, we have this image right here. I mean, what the heck is going on? Hold on. Is this an alien on the balcony? This thing just came from Mars? It's about to go for a bike ride. Well, Google took note of this image and said, you know what? We can't have people believing that there's aliens on Earth. So we're actually going to blur out this image, which makes me more believe that this is a truly an alien. But I mean, is this creepy or what? If I was Google, I would probably remove this next image. And this image I'm talking about comes into number 
Is this a cow that is injured or, you know, is trying to drag itself across the road to the other side? It's almost like the Google Earth vehicle hit this cow. There was even another image on Google Earth of a donkey being seen frame by frame tipping over. And I mean, that has to have been Google hitting the donkey and the Google Earth vehicle is driving away and the donkey is just like tipping over and it just died. What the heck is going on? Is Google vehicles killing animals? We have to put a stop to this now. Moving into number five, we have potentially a murder scene. This is the image right here. It's an overlooking view of the dock, and if you can look closely, there's a trail of blood at the end of the dock, and it looks like someone is dragging a body that is just totally bleeding out. But upon investigation, it turned out that the trail of blood was actually just water. It was a dog holding a stick that came out of the water, but for some reason, the water just looked red, and the stick looked like someone was dragging a body. Now we have a killer on the loose. Take a look at this image right here. This is a person who looks like they're gonna kill the driver of Google vehicle. Google probably feared for their lives in a number four. I mean, what is this guy doing? But we will never know and we're never gonna find out this guy's identity. Now I know Japan is known for their futuristic technologies, but this image right here, I don't know how to explain it, but this comes in to number three. This image was taken in Japan and are those birds or are they people? I'm so confused. Who does this? Imagine walking down the road and you see this right here. If I saw that, I'd probably cross the street and like just run for my life and just hope I don't have any bird seeds or anything like bird food in my pocket or on me. Okay, so more randomness happens in at number two. What you're looking at right now is a guy in a wolf costume, some guy who looks like Freddy Krueger, the character from Scream, and the fourth one, I have no idea. Who do you guys think that is? And they appear to be looking right at the camera. I'm not sure if something happened or if something is about to happen, but it looks like that being the Google driver, it's a serious job. Finally, in at number one, I'm pretty sure this is the aftermath of something that went horribly wrong, but Google has blurred out this car in this picture, but they haven't blurred out all these dead bodies found in a recycling bin. And I like how they're in the recycling bin instead of the garbage as if the killer wants the bodies to be reused. After investigating, this actually just ended up not being a murder scene. These bodies turned out to be full-size mannequins. And I'm not really sure who does that. I mean, just put them in a bag because that, it doesn't look like it's something a good situation happening. Haunted Crosswalk kicks things off in at number 10. Somewhere in South America on Google Maps, there is a crossroad, but there are some things you should know before you decide to cross the street at this busy intersection. Aside from looking both ways, you know, before you cross, you might want to take extra precautions because you might stumble across a dark figure. According to the local legends, if you enter the middle, you will see everything go dark and then you'll be met face to face with a shadowy figure known as the Crossroad Reaper. Well, here's a picture of the Reaper caught on Google Maps camera. Don't believe he's real? Well, why don't you try crossing the intersection yourself? And then you try to tell me you never saw him. The Hellfire Caves takes us to number nine. So if you're not into claustrophobia, labyrinths, or dangerous places, then you're gonna wanna stay far away from the Hellfire Caves. A team of paranormal investigators traveled through the long winding tunnels in an attempt to conjure up spirits. This cave is home to catacombs that lie about 300 feet below the surface. The old Hellfire Fire Club used to hold meetings that consist of pagan worship and human sacrifices. Supposedly there are a ton of evil ghosts that linger within these caves, but if that doesn't scare you, it's for sure scaring me, maybe a half a mile of tunnels underground will do the trick. Because you never know, maybe you'll get lost and you'll never see the surface ever again. Gomentong Cave in Malaysia brings us to number 8. This next cave seems like it came straight out of a horror movie. The Gomentong Cave is the home to millions of bats. And and if that doesn't freak you out, maybe the millions of cockroaches that feast on anything alive will do the trick. Animals that accidentally fall into this scary cave will be quickly devoured by these cockroaches. Okay, and then we have the cherry on top. This place also has enormous cockroach eating centipedes that scurry along the cave walls. So don't ever go inside of this cave without wearing one of those sealed up bodysuits, or better yet, don't ever venture inside of it at all. Number seven takes us to Noval Cave in Romania. This place is also known as the Poison Caves because it is rich in hydrogen, sulfide, and carbon dioxide, but low in oxygen. But despite this, creatures are living in the cave and they have been separated from the outside world for the past 5.5 million years. Inside of this dark cave, there are spiders, scorpions, wood lice, 
and centipedes crawling along the walls and many of them haven't even been seen by humans. So who knows what else is lurking inside the shadows. The Cave of Sybil descends onto our list at number 6. There are some pretty creepy natural formations around the world where people think that these are entrances or even gateways into hell. One of the oldest known entrances to the underworld is this cave right here. Apparently it is so sinister and fueled by negative energy that birds won't even fly over it. They know better. According to the legend, the dead priestess Sybil guards this gateway and lures travelers into the fiery pit of hell. Well, you know what? I'm not willing to see if this legend is true or not. So you know what? I'm just going to keep my distance away from this one. Mammoth Cave in Kentucky takes our number five spot. So this is the largest haunted cave in America. So yeah, you're going to want to keep your distance from this place. And that's because it has a very dark past. There are over 150 documented paranormal events that have happened here. So that's why people are so fascinated with the cave's supernatural history. But in 1842, the cave was used to house patients that were infected with tuberculosis. Honestly, this sounds like such a morbid and gloomy place to try to recover from a deadly disease. All of the patients got worse and they eventually died within the cave. Some say that if you listen closely, you can actually still hear coughing inside because it's believed that the patients still haunt this cave even to this day. Moving into number four, let's talk about the caves of death in Scotland. Judging by the name, it says it all. Well, you wouldn't catch me going anywhere near this place, but for people who are brave enough to go on a death expedition, I mean a cave exploration, these remote caves can be found in northern Scotland. But be warned, archaeologists who already have explored these caves, well, they have found some pretty horrifying things. Human sacrifices used to be conducted there, and there are even children's heads posted on poles. There are thousands of dead bodies inside, and people believe that this cave could have been used for some pretty intense supernatural rituals. Like I said before, I'm staying away from all the caves on this list, especially this one. The Moaning Cavern is up next at number three. This dark cave got its name, well, because you can hear a creepy moaning sound coming from inside of the cavern. This happens because the soul of the dead are screaming out in agonizing pain. Okay, not really, but the moans are from when the air circulates deep within the cave. But the sound is still pretty unsettling. If a scary moaning doesn't keep you away, maybe this will. Well, there are over 100 prehistoric bodies lurking at the bottom of the cave, and no one knows what they're doing there. Once you repel 165 feet into the cave, you will have to exit through an iron staircase, and you're gonna wanna watch your step because it's a long way down if you fall. Killing Cave takes our number two spot on this list. Okay, who the heck are naming these caves? Killing Cave? Well, if you ever visit Cambodia, you can go visit the Killing Caves for yourself for some reason. Well, not that you would really want to. I mean, is this really a big tourist attraction? Well, it might be because in the 70s, these caves used to be a place to torture and murder people, so there is history behind it. While the bones of the victims can still be found inside, some of the skeletons have been crammed into display cases, and there are chicken wire cages that are filled up high with human skulls. Torture devices and victims' clothing are still scattered along the floor, and many other people were murdered there when they were pushed into the cave from the skylight above. So I'm thinking that a place with this much dark history can't be good for the soul. There is definitely an evil presence there and it's also a pretty morbid place if you ask me. And just like that, topping our list in at number one, we have the Bell Witch Cave. This property and cave was once owned by John Bell and it's believed that the Bell Witch torments the Bell family until they mysteriously died. The family used to see strange animals around their property and late at night they would hear strange noises such as gnawing, choking and dragging sounds. Violent attacks by unknown forces started happening to the family. The youngest daughter would wake up covered in scratches and she'd be covered in bruises as well. Apparently the Bell Witch lived inside of the caves and anyone who stepped foot on the property Property will be paid a nasty visit by her. Starting us off in at number 10 on this list, we have this. All right, I'm not sure what I'm looking at, but I think these are the real life pigeon men. If I saw this, if I was driving around at nighttime and I saw this, I'd be freaking out. I don't know if a robbery is about to go down. I don't know what's going on. Is this a, is this a bird protest? Are you protesting for pigeons? Okay, well, apparently this photo was actually found by a Reddit user and it's from Japan. It's a pretty famous random Google map image 
strange and kind of hilarious. I just have way too many questions on that one. I don't know why that became famous. What is the backstory? Moving on to number nine, we have Diego Garcia. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps us out. Diego Garcia is a US occupied small island in the Indian Ocean. Technically, it's an overseas territory of Great Britain. In 1966, the people on the island were employed as contract farmers. They were working on coconut plantations. But from 1968 to 1973, the farm workers were kicked off the island by the UK government so that the US slash UK military could have a joint base on the island. So in 1966, the United States was given the rights to use the island if they forgot about the 14 million debt that the UK owed them. Now the island is used by government officials and it's highly, highly guarded. In fact, rumor has it that the island is home to a secret prison. Rumor also has it that the Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 that went missing without a trace actually just landed on this island. Not only that, but apparently rumor has it that this base is used by the CIA to torture prisoners. There's some crazy theories out there. I hope one day we'll find out if any of them are true. Then in 2009, the US military evicted several thousand of the island's local residents. Why they did this is still so top secret. Like they don't know why they got evicted. I really wish we knew. Something fishy is going on over there. Coming in at number eight, we have the Dugway Proving Ground. Located in Utah, the Dugway Proving Ground is the main biological and chemical weapons testing site for the US Army. Like who knows how many and what kinds of dark deadly weapons they are building and testing there. The base also contains top secret US military research documents, which is one of the reasons why the government doesn't want you to know about it. Now, in 1968, the unbelievable happened at the base. On March 13th, a high speed jet sprayed 320 gallons of nerve gas VX around the air in a test. This is so deadly that 10 milligrams can kill people. It'll stop your respiratory muscles from working and then you'll just choke to death. Anyways, it sprayed in an area near a farm. The next day, thousands of sheep were found dead. The government denied that this was their fault, but people aren't buying it. Either way, they paid the rancher who lost a sheep over $300,000 and tried to keep this situation hush hush. So the government definitely doesn't want us to know any of that. So, but I know it and I shared it with you. <laughs> Moving on to number seven, we have Camp Perry. Camp Perry, otherwise called The Farm, is a top secret training facility run by the CIA. The place is used to train CIA officers as well as officers working in the Defense Intelligence Agency. One of the reasons why this place is so secretive is because they don't want the identity of their top secret agents to be leaked. Because then, hello, they wouldn't be secret agents anymore, would they? Now, listen to just how intense this camp is. So former CIA officer Bill Wagner went to a three week interrogation course at the farm in 1970. He revealed that the people learning to be good interrogators practiced techniques such as sleep deprivation, mock execution, and would deliberately taint food. Which exposes that CIA interrogators use these techniques in real life. Of course, the US government has never formally acknowledged the existence of this camp. Although many people know that it's real. Coming in at number six, we have Area 51. Of course, I had to put this one on the list. Hello, everyone wants to know what the heck is going on at that top secret base. Like, are the rumors true? Do they really have animals hiding there? Are they conducting unethical tests on humans? Area 51 is home to a number of conspiracy theories because it's so highly protected and secretive. Seriously, people have gotten killed for trying to even get close to the building. This has led a lot of people to believe that the military is up to something. What do you think goes on in Area 51? Let me know in the comments below. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Sherman Kent School for Intelligence Analysis. This is a training school in Reston, Virginia for CIA analysts. The school has been given the nickname The Vault because of how many locks and alarms and guards it has. 
So basically, the school opened in May of 2000 and it apparently teaches members many important things, such as foreign languages, regional studies, satellite image analysis, wiretap transcript analysis, and media report analysis. So basically, everything you think a spy would need to know. This place is basically spy school, which is super cool. Now, like all places on this list, this one is also heavily guarded. It is located on the second floor of a five story structure. The glass windows are smoked to prevent people from looking in and spying. The building also contains sensors to prevent eavesdropping from outside. And like I said, it's protected by a number of locks and alarms and surveillance. In our fourth spot, we have Menwith Hill. Menwith Hill is a Royal Air Force base located in the UK. In fact, it is said to be one of the most secretive places in the UK. First off, the place is super odd. Like, there's a bunch of white domes all over the place that look like giant golf balls. Like, I feel like it's just the government's own mini putt or golfing range or something like that, but it's not. This site is said to be the largest electronic monitoring system on the planet. So basically, it's a place where they spy on us, monitoring our every move. The site first opened to spy on the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Since then, we don't know exactly what they're spying on. But it's a vital part of the NSA surveillance network. In 2012, it was believed that the base was involved in a number of drone attacks. However, this has never been confirmed. On top of that, it was revealed that the NSA used the base to, and I quote, aid a significant number of capture kill operations. That is terrifying, wow. Moving on to number three, we have Kapustin Yar. Kapustin Yar is basically Russian's version of Area 51. It is a top secret base created by the USSR. It was used for developing the Soviet space program. But now, rumor has it that it is home to aliens. Apparently, people saw a large red sphere flying in the sky right above this base. Others claim to have seen three-eyed aliens wearing silver overalls there. I mean, hey, at least he's stylish. In fact, most alien sightings in Russia occur near this top secret base. Coincidence? I think not. It could be that aliens are trying to escape from this base or something like that. There's even rumors of this base being used to conduct alien autopsies. It's pretty creepy. I don't even want to know if I want to find out what goes on in there. In our second spot, we have the Secret Super Command Bunker. Apparently, the Pentagon is planning to build a secret command bunker 3,500 feet under Washington, D.C. What's the purpose of this bunker, you ask? Well, just in case of nuclear war, the bunker will keep people safe from the nukes. Apparently, the pandemic shook the US government and now they, and I quote, put plans in place to ensure critical elements of the US government can keep functioning in the midst of an extreme crisis. So they're basically gonna be like, sick, every man for themselves, peace out, and then just disappear into this secret bunker. And in our number one spot, we have Porton Down. Close to Stonehenge, there's a place called Porton Down, which is basically a massive experimental testing center. It's known for working on chemical and biological weapons, as well as dealing with dangerous pathogens. The stuff that goes on in there is dark, and I mean dark. Starting in 1945, the government began testing nerve gas on real humans. These testings on humans went until 1989. In the end, more than 3,400 people had nerve gas tested on them. In 1953, a man named Ronald Madison died after being subjected to liquid nerve gas. Not only did they lie and say they were no longer testing the gas on humans, but they denied that the nerve gas was the cause of his death. Recently, however, it was discovered that they are now testing this gas and other dangerous weapons on animals. What else goes on in there is unknown. Like, what if they're still running unethical tests on humans? It's crazy. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Pigeon People. Japan is the home to many wonderful things, and that includes the wacky, bizarre Pigeon People of Google Earth. Yes, you heard me correctly. What looks absolutely terrifying on the surface is thankfully most likely just a strange prank, but basically it saw a group, all wearing pigeon heads, lined up on the sidewalk ready for the Google camera as it went by. It's definitely a strange sight to begin with, but it's made even weirder by the turn of their heads in order to follow 
with the camera. Honestly, really unsettling when you first look at it. I mean, pigeons are already weird creatures, so this little prank definitely has a bit of an eerie feeling to it. But the good news is that it's likely just a fun group of students from the art school that is nearby to this weird scene found on Google Maps. Coming in at number nine is the plane. So this image was taken at Holly Hill Road in Hillsborough, Oregon, and it's just acres and acres of greenery, and in the middle of it is a 727 jetliner. The scene honestly looks like a plane crash that no one ever found despite the plane being fully intact. And looking at it, I was like, damn, someone should really check this out. What if there are remains? I mean, I don't know. But I did some more digging, and it's actually not a crash plane at all. Plot twist. Don't we just love a cheeky plot twist? So since 1999, a man called Bruce Campbell has been transforming this plane into his dream home. The bottom of the plane is fully plexiglass, and the nose of it is sort of sitting on a pile of pallets, which doesn't seem very sturdy, but if the man got the plane into the middle of nowhere, I, I trust his methods and that this pile of pallets will really uphold the plane. He went on to say he knows his home is a huge toy, but it's also bug proof, fireproof, able to stand extreme temperatures, so basically it's all good for an apocalypse should one happen soon. And if it does, Bruce, can I join you in that plane? At number 8 we have the pigeon people. So this image was taken at the Tamagawa Aqueduct Greenway in Tokyo. And this one just perplexed me. The image is basically a walkway with a bunch of people walking, obviously. But in this angle, there are eight people in normal everyday outfits, all standing there with their hands by their sides, wearing massive pigeon head masks. They're not really masks since they cover the face and the neck and everything, but either way, I have questions. I have many, many questions. I even looked around the street to see maybe if it was some kind of dress up party or some festival of some kind, but no, the other people on the street are definitely not wearing pigeon heads, so I have about as much information as you do. Zero. But the image, I'm sorry. Filling our number seven slot is the pool party. So this image was taken in Harcourt, Ontario, and it's in the middle of a field. You can see the farm and the silos in the background. So as you can imagine, it's pretty much in the middle of nowhere. But bang, in the middle of this image is a pool party. There's a poolside chair, a hot tub, and four people looking like they're having a mint time. Except they're not people, they're all mannequins. One's lying on the chair, two are in the hot tub, and one is standing holding something, and I can't really Really tell if it's like a fake fish. I, I honestly have no idea what it is. There's even a fake sun behind them. I mean, someone actually cut out a sun and stuck it on the pole behind them because let's face it, day or night, they're gonna be there. The mannequins, they can't move. So at least it'll always be sunny for their party. I don't know why someone would make this, but I mean, I'm not gonna judge. I mean, maybe I'll judge a little, I'm sorry. Now at number six is the Bear Man. So this one was taken outside a cabin on Fish Lakes Creek in Alaska. Now the image is of a patio area of this cabin and sitting around an empty fire pit is a man dressed in a full bear suit. Face and all, it's not just a onesie, it's everything. He's not with anyone because if he was and they were also dressed up as animals, this whole thing would be a lot less creepy, but sadly, he's sitting alone. And what makes this image and the real cherry on top is the fact that dude is all also cradling a gun. Now at first I really had no idea what he was carrying, I was like is that a black fish, is it a device of some kind, but after zooming in as much as I possibly could, I concluded that it is in fact a gun. Now again, why was this man standing there in a bear suit? Why is he holding a gun? And I can really, I can, I can suspend my disbelief enough and be like, maybe he was holding a hunting rifle and he was going hunting in the area, but it was more of like a medium sized gun, kind of like a really, really mini MK47. There's my COD knowledge coming in handy. Ha ha ha. Coming in at number 5 is the dog. Now this image was taken in Buenos Aires and it's basically a parking lot in what looks like a bit of a run down area of town. Now but the weird part about the image is the stuffed dog that is hanging off of a leash from the telephone wire. Now before you think I'm talking taxidermy, no don't worry it's a toy, it's not a real stuffed dog because that would be horrendous, but a stuffed dog toy is still very questionable. But anyway I don't know how the person even got it up there and forget the how, I'd like to know why even. At at least if it was a busy central part of the city I'd understand it a bit more I guess but it's literally a random parking lot. And I'd really like to know why the person chose this location specifically, well I mean I'd like to know a lot of things but there you go. Stuffed dog toy hanging from a telephone wire in Buenos Aires. There's a sentence I never thought I'd say. At number 4 is the woman. So this one was taken on 2nd street in Roswell, New Mexico and it's basically a road surrounded by desert on both sides. That's, that's it, that's all it is. There's nothing 
around this place for ages, yet the image Google Street View captured is a woman in a dress and long boots walking with a piece of luggage. There was like one car in the distance of the shot that I could see, but it seemed to be going away from her, not towards her. And even then, I mean, how long had she been walking for? Was she wearing sunscreen? Where was she going? I feel like if I had to make up a backstory for this image, it would be that she was on the way to a trip with her partner of some kind. They must have had a bad fight, broken up, and she was like, screw this, I'm out of here, I'll walk home if I have to. And that's exactly what she did. So, power to you, random woman. Filling our number three slot is Rudolph. So, this image was taken on a road in northern Norway, and it's actually quite a scenic image. A rocky cliff sort of terrain on the right of the road, and on the left, it's surrounded by a huge body of water and some mountains in the background. Postcard material. But on the road itself, you see a running reindeer. Like that thing looks like it's galloping for its life. It had a tiff with Santa's other reindeer crew and was like, I'm out. Peace. It's actually quite a cute creature. I hope it turned out okay and that it got to wherever it was hell bent on going without getting hit by a car or anything like that. Even though I feel like if a car did hit it, it would probably do more damage to the car than to the reindeer itself. But we at Top 10 stand in solidarity with Rudolph's getaway mission. You go, girl. Or guy. Or they. Now at number two are the neighbors. So this image was taken at a bus stop in Nagoro, Japan. Now it looks like quite a normal town. There are two people sitting at the bus stop and ten others sitting in this sort of shed right next to it. And that scene is like mundane, it's very normal, it would have been fine, except for the fact that people are not people, they are ragdolls. If I was exploring Japan and I came upon this scene, I would be like, people are dressed up as these ragdolls and I'm about to get murdered by them. But in reality, an artist called Tsukimi Ayano actually she created these ragdolls along with hundreds of others to be stand-ins for her previous neighbours who either moved away from the village or died or what have you. Imagine everyone dying or moving away and you being the only living human in this town of ragdolls. A life I'd rather not live, honestly. And finally, at number one is the dead body. Now, if we're talking about weird things seen on Google Maps, I feel like this image everyone has seen. It was taken in the city of Almere in eastern Amsterdam, and it shows a long pier with an octagonal platoon at the end of it and a body of water all around it. Now, I saw this image years ago and freaked out because the pier looks like it's showing a murder cover up, and I kid you not. There's a long train of blood leading up to the pier, and on the pier itself, there's even more blood and what appears to be someone dragging a dead body. But this has been dispelled, guys. It's not the new CSI story because the real story is actually a lot cuter than you'd think. The trail of blood is actually a trail of water, and the figures on the pier are two people bending over their wet dog who is lying on the pier. The trail of water is from the dog, the bloody smears are just more wet dog marks, and the dead body is in fact just a dog. Gotta love it. Starting off this countdown, we have Amchitka Island. Located in Alaska, sections of this island are blurred out on Google Maps, and no one really knows why this is. But it may have to do with the nuclear testing that once took place there. From the 1950s to the 1970s, Amchitka Island was the site of US underground nuclear testing. Nowadays, they are running tests to see if the island has any radioactive leakage there. If there isn't, then in 2025, it could become a wildlife reserve. But again, why is half of the island blurred out? Maybe that's the section where the nuclear testing took place. But why is it still blurred? A lot of people think that the military is doing some suspicious illegal activities there and that's why. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. All right, let's move right along. Number nine. This is a dumpster in Chile that appears to have mummified dead bodies dumped in it. I'm really hoping there is some sort of costume store nearby, or this picture was just taken after Halloween, but who knows. Next up on this list, just like that, number eight. So this image is from the Netherlands, and it appears that there is someone dragging a dead body to the edge to dump it. Is that the real life Dexter Morgan? Didn't Dexter dump his bodies in the water? And also, isn't there a new Dexter coming out? I'm super excited. Well, going back to this picture here, we actually found the coordinates on Google and searched it before this video, and there is now a new image without anyone on the pier. So this was definitely strange and scary. And Google's probably like, oh, we just captured like a live situation happening here. I think people looked into this picture and I'm pretty sure it was just a wet dog and, and the, what people are seeing as, as blood is just water. Well, at least that's what I'm hoping. Number seven. 
This image is from France. It has sparked a ton of questions on the internet about what on earth that creature is standing on the balcony. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Also, if you guys are liking this video, make sure to hit the like button because it really helps us out. It's prompted several paranormal and otherworldly folks to look further into it. But now, if you search that same location, the entire camera is blurry and nothing can be seen. Number six. Hopefully CCTV helped save this woman. Well, hopefully she was found safe and alive after this image was captured. This might have been the moment she was kidnapped and thrown into a trunk of a car by two men. All right, let's move on to number five. Is this real life right now? I don't know what that is. Obviously, Google Maps messed up on this one. Technology isn't 100%, unless unless Elon Musk made it, it's 100%. But I don't know what that is, like an, like an owl? Yeah, I think it just got split. Is that an owl? <laughs> it is an owl? No, oh, it not. isn't. <laughs> it's definitely a, it's confirmed cat. <laughs> okay, so this one is less scary and more of a funny picture just to lighten the mood a little bit, but it's pretty weird if you ask me. I'm hoping that this is just a glitch, a real life glitch, or maybe just a simple glitch in the camera. Maybe this is a new discovery. Maybe this is a new species. What do we name it? Guys, what do we name it? Tell me in the comment section below. You guys are gonna put like half cat, half owl. You guys are gonna troll me hard. Oh my God, Landon thought that was an owl. <laughs> Some of you guys did as well, all right? Okay, I, I might be the only one. Next up, number four. Well, we're looking at this picture. This is one of the most famous strange Google Map Street view finds out there. And I have to hope that someone knew the cameras was hitting that area. And this is just a setup, you know, just to be funny. There's a lot of pranks out there, a lot of funny business going on out there. Well, otherwise it means that this thing actually exists and I don't like thinking about it at all. Can anyone confirm if this was found near Area 51? What do you guys think is in Area 51? What is President Donald Trump hiding in Area 51? Coming in at number three, all right, well, we have this. We're looking at it right now. Well, this is a picture of blood lake it was found on Google Maps and the lakes surrounding it are normal colors so why is this one such a deep blood red I mean I don't do we do we want to know the answer to this one well apparently it is believed that a slaughterhouse nearby has run off to this body of water so they're just slaughtering animals and that could be blood the blood could just be draining into it I really don't think that's very sanitary all right number two I don't even know what to say about this one it's so odd to me that cars would be normally driving by with people dressed like this this has to be a prank Boozy tube, is that you? Nelk boys, is that you guys? Were they filming a music video of some sorts? I have so many questions. I bet the real story is hilarious. If you have any ideas on what on earth is happening here, let me know. Well, let me know about any of these, but especially that half cat, half owl picture. Let, let me know if it's actual owl. Finally on our list at number one, we have this picture right here. Okay, this is so weird. This is pulled directly from Google Images. So this is in Castle stand and researchers say this isn't satanic at all and it's just an outline of the park that is there I'm gonna go ahead and say that that is a lie no way this is just innocent at number nine we have the Siatrum River in Indonesia in places all over the world resources are so tight that people are forced to exploit their environment the Siatrum River is a living representation of this it's located in Indonesia and there's very little infrastructure around there for these people to live a clean and healthy life so they resort to taking what they can from the land. This river is extremely polluted because the 5 million people who live there have to use it to bathe, water crops, dispose of waste, dispose of garbage, and drink. The river has been so polluted that any wildlife that used to call this place home has either left or died. It is terrible to see a place where people are forced to live without clean drinking water. At number 8 we have the Queen's Bath Hawaii. There are beautiful beaches, parties everywhere, and enough drunk tourists to make a conga line all the way to the American mainland. But it's the wonderful attractions that can lure people into a false sense of security. On the island of Kauai, there is an absolutely breathtaking formation called the Queen's Bath. It is a natural pool formed right into the rock bed of the island. Island. It kind of looks like a place royalty would come to dip their feet in while they drink champagne and laugh about stealing the world's resources. But this place is similar to a Venus flytrap. Gorgeous to look at, but when you get too close it can be dangerous. People will often go swimming in the queen's bath, and then a very strong wave will come through and either bash them against the rocks or wash them out to sea. 
There are tons of warning signs trying to tell tourists that they should not go swimming in this pool. But every year, tourists either drown or need to be rescued. At number seven, we have Syria. Syria has been in constant turmoil for many years. First, there was constant civil war, the rebel soldiers battling the government every single day in an attempt to liberate Syria from the oppressive government. This meant that warfare was commonplace in the streets. And then ISIS took over a major chunk of Syria, which obviously meant that the violence only escalated. Then the American troops had to come in and try and push out ISIS, which meant even more war. It seems like the struggles in Syria will never end. Can everyone there just like call a timeout? Like everyone just stop fighting for two minutes and then just be friends and see what happens. I think that is the worst advice I have ever given anyone. Yeah, Che, you can stop war by everyone just being friends. And that's why I'm making top 10 lists and I'm not in politics. At number 6 we have Omayakon, Russia. Here's something about me, I love warm weather. If it's 40 plus celsius and I'm sweating at home just from putting on my pants, I've never been happier. So this place would be hell on earth for me. Omayakon is the coldest inhabited place in the world. 500 people live there year round for some unknown reason. They must like it when it gets so cold that your eyeballs freeze inside your head, which is a real thing that can happen. The temperature can drop to negative 62 degrees celsius. That's minus 80 Fahrenheit. It would be so cold I would want to cry out but my tear tucks would be frozen so all I would be able to do is scream and pray for death. One of the weirdest things about this place is it's actually a tourist attraction. People will choose to go to the coldest village on the earth rather than eating pizza in Italy. If you're that kind of person, don't talk to me. I don't need your weird vibes getting on me. I'm vibing all the time. I don't want your bad cold vibes in my life, okay? One of the main tourist attractions at this place is a giant thermometer that will remind you how much fun you're having by showing you the lip slicing temperatures. And one time it got so cold in this village that the thermometer broke. What? The hell. At number five, we have Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. This one is a toss up. Like, I would probably go to Rio. Rio's an amazing city. It's filled with some of the most gorgeous people you've ever seen in your life. They have the amazing Carnival Festival where you can party for like days and probably fall in and out of love 10 times. Brazilian food is amazing. You can go to a Brazilian steakhouse and eat enough meat that you'll get meat sweats that soak right through your shoes. But Rio definitely has a darker side. Rio's one of the most dangerous cities on the planet. There is a ton of gang violence with Rio being a major hotspot for drug trafficking and gun trade. You also have a good chance of getting kidnapped or murdered. So when you're picking your next vacation spot, you gotta decide how bad you want to see people dance on a float during carnival. At number 4 we have Lake Nyos, Cameroon. Back in August of 1986, a giant cloud of carbon dioxide erupted out of the bottom of Lake Nyos. This invisible cloud of death spread fast at 50 kilometers an hour and ended up killing 1700 people. This is the kind of thing where legends of God and monsters come from. If this happened when an ancient civilization was living there, they wouldn't have known that this was caused by a giant carbon cloud from a nearby volcano. They would have thought it was some sort of demonic forest and they needed to sacrifice things. They would have been afraid of this lake until the end of time. But thankfully we have computers to tell us what happened. A seismic shift caused gas from a volcano to come through Lake Nyos. This is normal but the gas usually is released slowly, not in these massive amounts like this. Since this happened, scientists have developed a way to extract gas from the base of the lake, preventing it from happening again, but even though they're taking safety measures, you won't catch me anywhere near this place. At number 3 we have the Ganges River, India. The Ganges River in India is one of the most polluted rivers on the planet. If you thought the river Siatram was bad, it has nothing on the Ganges. This river is used for sewage, personal waste and the waste of major companies. And get this, over 500 million people use this river regularly. Some people come visit it every day because they believe it has holy powers that can heal you, which is absolutely Absolutely not true. The river is actually packed with harmful chemicals that cause cancer. From all the constant traffic of people visiting the river, it's only getting more polluted. There is trash that is left there every day from all the people that make the trip. And there isn't even a proper cleaning system, so the problem is only getting worse. At number two, we have the Skeleton Coast, Namibia. This place has all the pieces of an environment that is trying to kill you. I mean it's called the Skeleton Coast for God's sake. They didn't call it sexy fun margarita beach. No they didn't. First off we have very harsh waters. The tides and waves are so unpredictable that you can see the shells of all the shipwrecks along the coast. Everything from major tankers to little tugboats can be seen broken down along this beach. If you are one of the people who are unlucky enough to get shipwrecked here and survive by swimming to the mainland, you would now be in one of the worst 
worst deserts on the planet. It is extremely dry with almost zero water sources and spans hundreds of kilometers. There's also this eerie fog effect that comes off the ocean and covers the desert, meaning you could be lost in a brutal landscape without being able to see 10 feet in front of you because the fog is so thick. That sounds like a pleasant way to die. At number one, we have Caracas, Venezuela. Okay, for the number one spot, we have one of the most hostile cities on the planet, so strap in. The entire country of Venezuela has been at war with its own government for years now. Protesters are shot and killed in the streets on a regular basis, and all this chaos has seemed to be boiled down to Caracas. People desperately want their freedom from the oppressive government, and on top of that, there's an insane amount of organized crime. You have drug lords moving products to the city constantly, and hijackings are a regular occurrence. And it's suggested that you never wear anything expensive when you're walking through the street because people will rob it right off your body. So leave your Gucci sneakers at home unless you want to be walking around barefoot. To give you a little perspective, if you Google countries with the most murders right now, Caracas will be number three. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the star. While searching through images, someone stumbled upon an isolated corner of Kazakhstan, and here they found a large pentagram etched into the ground, which of course may have set off some alarm bells. The five point star is surrounded by a circle and is very clearly visible. And of course, once the image began circling the internet, people were coming up with only the most wild theories and explanation. In the end, it turned out to be the exact opposite of something sinister. It's actually the outline of a park that was made into the shape of a star. The star is so clearly marked because of the roadways and where there's no road, there's a lot of trees, which makes the symbol stand out even more. It's like the best possible outcome for this one, honestly. A beautiful tree-lined park in the shape of a star. How lovely. At number nine, we have 25 degrees south, 153 degrees east, Fraser's Island, Australia. Australia is a beautiful place. It's like hot Canada with more fighting and beer. Honestly, I've never been there. I'm just basing it off of movies and TV. I'm really stereotyping you guys. I'm very sorry. But globally, Australia is known for housing some of the most dangerous creatures on the planet, and Fraser's Island is considered the most dangerous place in Australia. It's basically a funnel for several different dangerous species. To start it off, there are two types of jellyfish which are common to Fraser's Island. Urukanji and blue bottles. Both of those jellyfish have stings so severe that they will send you to the hospital. And if the waters weren't dangerous enough, this is also a hot spot for young great white sharks. I'm assuming they go to these beaches for biting practices. They want to get their reflexes nice and sharp before they chase down some surfers. So you might be saying to yourself, well, I'll just stay out of the water and I'll go explore the island. Well, there are packs of wild dingoes running around waiting to turn your tibia into a chew toy. Oh, and if you get attacked by any of these wild animals, there is zero medical services on the island. So you better hope you don't bleed out fast while the helicopter is zooming you to save your life. At number eight, we have 12 degrees north, 57 degrees east, Danakil Desert, Ethiopia. We're jumping back into the heat and with winter just around the corner, this place makes me kind of jealous. I know that temperatures in deserts are high enough to kill someone, but I think it might be nicer than having to wait for a bus in the snow. Anyways, the Danakil Desert, also known as the Danakil Depression, is one of the hottest places on the planet. And because of its extreme heat, it's home to natural wonders. First, there is a decent amount of volcanic activity. This might be one of the only places on Earth where you walk into the desert to cool off. There's also mysterious salt pools. These are one of the largest tourist attractions in the area. Salt deposits build up on the sides of these pools, and the water is packed with sulfur. The salt has the aesthetic of a rimmed glass straight from nature's cocktail lounge. However, don't drink from one of these pools unless you want a slow, painful death. And I think we can agree we're all looking for swift and numb when it comes to dying. The pools are extremely poisonous. Even the air just above the pools is so packed with carbon dioxide that when small animals get too close, they will suffocate and die. And here's the cherry on top of the sundae. This place is nicknamed the gateway to hell. Wow. Beautiful. At number seven, we have 37 degrees north, 59 degrees east, Fukushima, Japan. For anyone who is unaware why Fukushima is a place you do not want to visit, it is home to the second largest nuclear disaster ever. In 2011, a major earthquake hit Fukushima, damaging a power plant, causing the city to evacuate. Since then, no one has been allowed to return, and the situation has improved, but it is not looking great. In order to keep the core cool of this power plant that melted down, they are constantly pouring water on top of them. This 
This water is then contaminated with radiation, obviously, and they must contain it so it doesn't spread. But they are running out of places to put this contaminated water. Also, the city is now overgrown with vegetation. With the absence of people, the forests have started to reclaim what was rightfully theirs. And with it has brought a little bit of wildlife. I talked about this in a previous video, but I wanted to mention again because this is actually crazy. Radioactive wild boars have come into Fukushima and are thriving. For whatever reason, they do not seem to be afraid of radiation and they are staking their claim on the land. This is how monster movies start. Next thing you know, we're going to have giant mutant pigs swimming across the Pacific Ocean coming here to eat the West. At number 6, we have 2 degrees south, 36 degrees east, Lake Natron, Tanzania. From a distance, this lake seems like a bronze wonder. The color and stillness looks like something pulled right out of a travel magazine. But this is the last lake you would want to take a swim in. There is only three things that have managed to live in this lake. One species of fish, one type of flamingo, and some algae. Everything else that touches this water dies extremely fast. Why is that? Well, the pH in the lake can sit around 9 and sometimes stretch up to 10.5. The animals that call this place home have adapted to the harsh conditions. But let's say a bird unfamiliar with the area decides to take a dip. Their eyes and skin will be burned from the high pH levels and the ending result will look like they've been hit with Medusa's gaze. At number 5, we have 44 degrees south, 71 degrees west, Mount Washington, USA. Alright, we did a couple places in the excruciating heat and now it's time to head into the bitter cold. Mount Washington is freezing and it has temperatures that can reach 40 below. Fun fact about 40 below, that's where the two scales of Celsius and Fahrenheit meet. You can share that with your friends next time you're freezing to death in the minus 40 weather. I'm sure they'll love that little tidbit of information while their nose peels off. And if the brutal cold wasn't enough to make you want to avoid this place, it also has the fastest winds ever recorded on a mountain. 238 miles per hour. That's over 300 kilometers per hour. That's stronger than a category 5 hurricane. The wind is so strong it will give your face freezer burn right before it rips it off and sends it hurling down the mountain. At number 4 on the list we have 24 degrees south, 46 degrees west, Snake Island, Brazil. I didn't make this place up. I know it sounds like something pulled out of a cheesy low budget 80s action movie but it's real and it has enough snakes living there to make the cast of the Real Housewives for decades. There is one snake for every square foot. I don't have a fear of snakes but there's still no way I'm going to get close to this place. Especially since almost every species on the island is extremely venomous. There's even rumors that snakes will swim off the island to boats that are too close and kill the people on board and then eat them. I even heard there's a symbiotic relationship with the birds on the island and the snakes on the island where the birds will pick up the snakes and then drop them on people who are on the island so they get like an air attack and kill them. That one I made up. I just kind of wanted to hype up the story a little bit more. But your real biggest worry is about getting bitten and then having to ride in a boat back to the mainland to go see a doctor. It's a 90 kilometer trip so you would probably be dead before you got anywhere close to any sort of medical attention. At number 3 we have 3 degrees north, 98 degrees east, Sinabung Volcano, Indonesia. I mean who wouldn't want to live right next to an active volcano? It seems like a swell place to raise a family. But you guys are probably wondering, well you can live next to an active volcano but that doesn't mean it's going to blow up all the time. Well between the years 2010 and 2016, Cinnabung has popped off five times in six years. That is crazy. This place has blown up more times in six years than Conor McGregor has fought. And he is a professional fighter, huh? I hope he doesn't find me and kick my ass. I don't know, that could happen. I'm sure it's a beautiful place, but it would be hard to tell with all the constant lava flowing through it. This volcano is part of the Ring of Fire, which is a string of volcanoes lining up with tectonic plates that erupt more often than usual. So I'm not eager to check this place out, but you guys can go for me. At number 2 we have 25 degrees north, 70 degrees west, the Bermuda Triangle. Any kid growing up in the 90s heard about the Bermuda Triangle again and again. It was the plot point in every show from Scooby Doo to Jackie Chan's adventures. Yo, remember Jackie Chan had a cartoon and it was absolute fire? That cartoon was so good. Anyways, the Bermuda the Bermuda Triangle is a large chunk of the Atlantic situated between Florida, Bermuda and Puerto Rico and has been a hot spot for people disappearing. Planes, boats, rescue missions all have vanished without a trace and it leaves people baffled as to what is going on. Some people think it's a hot spot for storms to kick up, other people say there's magnetic forces that destroy navigation equipment. The crazier theories suggest that the Bermuda Triangle is a gateway for interdimensional travel. That aliens use this to fly across the universe in an instant. even though 
though there's a lot of disappearances from this area, many of them have been explained, but there's still a ton of cases that leave people wondering what's going on in this mysterious chunk of ocean. Ugh. I don't know why I did that tongue thing at the end. And number one on our list is 40 degrees north, 58 degrees east, the Darvaza gas crater, Turkmenistan. Right off the bat, this place is nicknamed the door to hell. It has an even creepier nickname than that other hell place. Not the place you want to spend your honeymoon, unless you're both super metal, then it's probably like a great choice. Turkmenistan has a massive natural gas reserve, and that has been the fuel to the door to hell. It was back in 1971 when Turkmenistan was still part of the Soviet Union. There was construction underway, and a drilling operation caused a large amount of the earth to collapse in. And what started flowing out of it? A toxic gas. If it wasn't dealt with quickly, it would have poisoned the entire area. Good news though, the gas was flammable, so the Soviets figured, we'll just light it on fire, it'll burn for a little while, and then we'll get back to work, comrade. Well, it did catch on fire, and then it did burn, but it never stopped. It has been burning since 1971, and has no sign of going out anytime soon. And if a giant pit of fire wasn't enough to keep you away, Turkmenistan is run by a dictator. Have a nice vacation. In our ninth spot, we have the disappearance. On November 7th of 1997, 40-year-old William Moult was reported missing after going out one night and never returning home. Sadly, the police had no leads as to where William could be or what happened to him. The case went cold for 20 years. That's when Google Earth found William. Basically, a housing development manager was using Google Earth to check out some properties when he saw something strange in a pond near the homes. Turns out this weird thing was William's car. The police ended up dragging the pond and retrieved his car. William's body was found in there as well. The only mystery that remains is how William ended up driving into the pond in the first place. In our eighth spot, we have the secret bunker. Hidden in the New Mexico desert is a secret bunker surrounded surrounded by strange symbols. These symbols were thought to be done by the works of aliens. Anyways, the bunker is located close to these symbols and it's said to be the alien space cathedral of the Church of Scientology. Former Scientologist Ron Hubbard says that the symbols mark a return point for reincarnation. The bunker even has its own private airstrip for the church's leaders. In 2005, it was confirmed that this bunker does indeed exist. This bunker is said to be the place where members can travel to in the future from other places in the universe. Moving on to number seven, we have the Blood Red Lake. Just outside of Sadr City in Iraq, there is a lake that is completely red. Hence why it was given the name Blood Red Lake. The reason as to why it's red remains a mystery. But of course, we have some theories. One is that pollution or sewage caused it to turn red. Another is that it's a result of the water treatment process. Whereas others believe that the lake is red from blood running into it from a slaughterhouse. To this day, no one has offered an official explanation as to why this river looks like blood. In our sixth spot today, we have the oil refinery. The Hungarian oil refinery, Sashalambata, is so private that they wanted Google Earth to block them out. But instead of blurring it or barring it with a black box, they asked Google to have it colored green, and no one knows why. Now it just looks like a weird football field. A lot of people are wondering what they're trying to protect or hide from us. Hopefully they aren't trying to hide some illegal or shady activity that they're into. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the French nuclear facility. La Hague is a nuclear fuel reprocessing facility in France that opened in 1976. It is responsible for treating nuclear fuel from several countries. But here's the thing. Since 1997, Greenpeace has been trying to shut it down. They have been dumping 1 million liters of liquid radioactive waste per day into the ocean. That is extremely toxic for the environment. What's even more messed up is that the site wasn't always blurred out. But when people heard about the whole Greenpeace controversy, they had Google Earth blur out their location. This has led people to believe that they are still dumping this radioactive waste into the ocean. They just don't want people to see what they're doing. In our fourth spot, we have the prisons. Now there are a number of prisons that are blurred out on Google Earth, including the Beaumet prison in France or the Almira Correctional Facility. Now there's a number of reasons for this. The main one being so that criminals don't figure out the layout of these prisons. They are afraid that they will use this information to plan an escape. In fact, this 
actually happened a couple of times. Following a successful jailbreak at the Beaumont prison, France's Prime Minister of Justice was like, it's because they knew the layout of the building. So this resulted in the prison being blurred, along with a number of other prisons. In our third spot, we have the invisible jet. Just last year, a Google Earth user discovered something that sent the internet into a frenzy. The user claimed to have found an invisible US Air Force plane hiding in plain sight. Pun intended. Check it out. Crazy, isn't it? Now this was spotted at an Air Force base in Texas. Either this plane is invisible or semi invisible because we can still see it, or Google Maps blurred it out to try and keep it a secret. Others say that it's just a glitch or that it's Wonder Woman's plane or that it's just a B-1 bomber with heat haze coming off of it. But I don't know, a lot of conspiracy theorists think otherwise. What do you think though? Let me know in the comments below. In our second spot, we have the giant sea monster. We really don't know what's going on in our ocean. Like over 80% of it remains unexplored and with all the nuclear waste that's going in it, who knows what kind of beasts lurk out there? Well, one of them might have been caught on camera. This image is what appears to be a massive sea beast. We don't know for sure what exactly it is, but it was spotted off the coast of Antarctica's Deception Island. That's right, the island is called Deception Island. It's kind of eerie. Anyways, theories range from this thing being an underwater UFO to the Kraken, even the Loch Ness Monster, which... If it's Nessie, then what is it doing all the way over there? Anyways, I will say it looks an awful lot like a giant squid. Who's trying to make a trip over there to figure it out in person? Maybe we can catch this beast. I'm just kidding, no thank you. And in our number one spot today, we have the escaped killer. As you know from part one of this video series, uh, Google Earth is a snitch. You gotta watch out because an escaped killer who was on the run for nearly 20 years was caught, all thanks to Google Earth. The man's name is Gio Achino Gamino, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but he is a convicted murderer, mafia member, and one of Italy's most wanted gangsters. He had been sentenced to life in prison for a murder he committed in 1998. In 2002, he managed to escape prison. He then went on to live in Spain under a fake alias. Now, well, let me explain how he got caught. So basically, someone tipped off authorities saying that he was living there and that he owned a restaurant. So they looked it up on Google Earth, and although his face was blurred, they saw him outside his restaurant. They ended up tracking him down, and he was arrested on December 17th of 2021, so fairly recently. Mm -hmm. 